Hello, and welcome to this very orange race car review stream. Very orange. I only just noticed that because I only just finished getting ready, put the camera in place and went, there is five orange cars this week. But all race cars, and we will be getting into the sim rig once I've gone over the initial look over of the cars and giving a bit of a uh, look over. So let's start saying hello to everybody. Welcome, Ed. Welcome, Frenbus. Welcome, Donkey Killer 69. Welcome, I'm assuming that's Javier Perez. Welcome, I am three Firebird. Welcome, yeah, yeah. And Aaron F. Welcome back again. Casual Gamer 3789, welcome to the stream. How's everybody doing? I'm hoping everyone's doing very orange today. Donkey Killer 69, you're a very weird puppy. Or dead donkey? Or no, you kill donkeys. Okay, my bad. So yeah, there was a lot happening in chat, but I wasn't able to really look at a whole lot of it. I just happened to catch a glance of like, you were confused as to why I took a picture of the rear. And that took me a little while to respond because I was still spawning in the car. This one over here, absolutely exquisitely detailed. I have no idea how it's detailed, so we're going to have a bit of a close look at that one. But also, it took forever to spawn in. And up until that point, my game was doing fine on frames. I spawned that one in, and suddenly I'm getting 15-ish FPS. It hates my car. Welcome, Jens, a channel member. How's it going? Yes, indeed, very orange today. Oh, phew. Also, wow, yes, orange. Quite orange. I feel as if I'm at a Donald, uh, Donald Trump convention. <laughs> orange first, green second. Hey, thanks for the 99 euro there, Aaron. That's probably like 6,000 Australian dollars at the moment. Oh, we're doing so terribly. Hold on, actually, I got the uh, thing on my home screen. What is the Australian conversion rate to the universal currency that is the US dollar? 70 cents. That means 30% poof into the ether. I like the brick on the right. You mean this, uh... Astony, jaggy, kind of like very British sort of body. Yeah, I kind of like it. Oh yes, I tried that car too and it was a frame rate killer. Yeah. Oh boy, that thing absolutely decimates my frame rate. The red one is a Apollo Project Eva. Uh, I did recognize the person who uploaded it. Kind of. Like, I, I don't know them. I just went, I've seen that name before. So, yeah. So AUD and CAD are both about the same. I think Canadian dollar is ever so slightly better. Let me quickly check that up. Because I'm half Canadian. I should keep on top of this. Uh, CAD to AUD. No, that's the wrong way around. Uh, one. Yeah. We're just under 90 Canadian cents. Not great. And also, welcome. We're Vixen and... Fugu 13. Do you know anything about Proton? Yes, so the first Protons we got here in Australia with the little hatchback, I can't remember what it was called, but it was the one that was the, tuned by Lotus. And then they kind of just like did that car for a while. Then there was a bit of a gap where there was no real word from Proton. It kind of like died off in popularity or for whatever reason. Very, uh, like their first car that they brought to Australia, very popular with uh, tuners and whatnot. Like really budget tuners. Then they started to come back and they've uh, taken the bottom of the market all the time. I don't know if they're good or not, but yeah. They seem reliable enough and cheap to repair. So, very important things to have. Wait, we have Fido here as well? Am I blind? I don't see Fido. I am blind. Anyway, let's get to... And have a look at these cars. If my controller will listen to me. There we go. Casual Gamer, why did my car not get in my car? Was the wannabe Porsche. Do you mean the one that was submitted as a .cart file and not a .zip 
uh, exported mod from automation? Is that the one? I wonder why that one didn't make it in. Oh, Ekai made it in too? Yes, Ekai Min's car did make it in. I just kind of want to make it seem as if it didn't in the chat by saying like, Oh, I've already downloaded the cars. Color you surprised? No, you mean color you orange. Like everybody else's color their car orange. Kind of wish this person ah, had color their car orange as well. Because then I'd be able to see some of the detail on it. It's really hard to see. But I do rather like this. This is like that disambiguous sort of supercar from... Uh, mid-early-ish 80s sort of time period. They went until about like the mid-later part of the 90s, depending on where you're from. Like Celine being like the latest of that kind of like disambiguous some car sort of design. Corvette looking? It's mid-engine. The only thing that I would disagree with is there is no real side vents on it, except there's a little bit here. I don't know if they've got the orientation of that right. It doesn't look so bad. I, I feel that this needed some more side ventilation. We get a sneaky peek at Peak Sleek. Huh. But yes, I do agree. Black cars do look sleek. I think what black does best is hide a lot of detail. So you're kind of only seeing the detail as the lights go over. It makes it look very interesting and very... Uh, detailed but you're actually losing a lot of what you're seeing in the detail and unfortunately in a car where you want to see detail it takes a lot of it away Ferrari vibes here a little bit of Ferrari at the front mostly yes I, I agree with that yeah the 80s wedges were great you can always change the color in the yeah I know and I think I will do that Okay, I mostly saw the front and it looked like an FR to me. Ah, okay, fair enough. You know what, actually, let's do that now. Let's bring some detail back into this car. That's the wrong one. I need to go to... Uh, color. Can we not change the color? Are we on the right car? Ah, there we go, okay. Hey, there we go. Now it's red. Did I... Yep, I changed the color of that car too. Whoops. You know what? That doesn't actually look so bad. And I can actually see that there's a vent there now. It just does not look nearly big enough. Welcome, Twisted T and Chibi and Skibbidaboo. Here's it all going for all of you. Make it sort of light blue. I don't know. If you said it looks like Ferrari, maybe we should keep it with Ferrari colors. Either this or bright yellow. I wonder what will happen if I spawn a wild cat on my PC. Probably going to go to a blue screen. If even Phil's struggling and he has a better PC than me. Yeah, I only have a 1080. Like, a 1080 is good. Don't get me wrong. But it's no, like, top-end modern graphics card. What is a 1080? Like, five years old now? Six years old, maybe? Hold on, when did the 1080 launch? GTX 1080 Wiki. Released in 2017. So that's, yeah, five years ago. Not the most cutting edge. I do want to replace it, but I'm also very cheap and stingy. Because I have to survive. Welcome, Mortix. Phil missed the opportunity to make it orange. You are right. I am sorry. That is my bad. Uh, let's go back to... Where's the metallic? Reduce the metallic. There we go. Yep, that works. How did I make that mistake? You have a 760 Ti, which is from like, yeah, okay. I'm not saying that I have a, uh, not a better graphics card than you. What I'm saying is like, mine is good, but I'm pretty sure there's better graphics cards out there or better CPUs, all that sort of stuff. I just have like a mid-range CPU and a mid-range graphics card by today's standards. Uh, what you're saying is, is you have quite outdated stuff so yeah how to enable better graphics model in showroom you don't answer what i just have my graphics set to whatever graphics i want them set at yeah bare minimum rx 580 the 580 is not a bad card it's only what meant to be a little bit worse than the 1080 isn't that somewhere around like a 1070 so not a not, not bad a little bit higher on the power usage though 
You want cheap? You're going AMD. Yeah, I do, I do have an AMD. What is it? A, I think it's a 5600X? Oh, I know. I just want people to cringe at your cut. Fair enough. Welcome, Sin. Now it looks like a GTA 5 car sort of color. You know, it does look a little bit GTA 5-ish. GTX 1650? Yeah. Didn't they bring that out because... Like, uh, people couldn't afford better cards and stuff like that, so they were doing weird things. Yes. Less than a 1080. It has a GTA 5 kind of look. I mean, about using mouse switching in showroom. Here, reflections or... What? I don't know what you're asking. Anyway, let's have a look at what we've got in this Ferrari S looking car. It looks like... Ferrari cross with modern Lam uh, sorry, modern McLaren just a little bit with the swooshiness on the side here, with like a an 80s, 90s Ferrari sort of thing. Not bad. I, I think um we're just missing a little bit of detail. Maybe some hood vent, maybe like a bigger side vent, considering that it doesn't take most of its air from the front, it'll take most of its air from the rear to get into the car. And it looks like a 2022 Lamborghini Countach comes in. Uh, it's a very slight amount. Ever so slightly. Like, you'd have to be very abstract on that. You got four piston, vented disc brakes, on uh, push rod suspension, carbon chassis, and only rear wheel drive. Let's go down to the back. And we have in here a big behemoth engine. But we have four piston, vented disc brakes on the back as well, with push rod. It's a little bit dark in here. We got ourselves a V12 naturally aspirated tubular. And then we've got ourselves a twin plenum. Not bad at all. Though, if we're going for like full Ferrari, not all car companies did this. But back in this day, if this was like the mid-engine range, it probably would have still had a plenum. It just wouldn't have been open. But it probably still would have come with individual throttle bodies. Considering that Ferrari and companies are a lot like that, not all of them. And not all the time, we're doing individual throttle bodies on, um... Uh... Cars uh, since about the... Like, 60s. Is when they really started to bring them into more modern sort of cars. The reason why you don't have it on all Ferraris is because... Uh, front-engine Ferraris... I mean, nowadays they do. But, uh, it keeps it a little bit... Neater, I suppose? I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but yeah, um, it probably would have had individual throttle bodies. Rear side looks very McLaren-ish. NSX Ferrari for you? I, no, I don't really see NSX that much. Maybe in the rake, but that's about it. So yeah, uh, interesting car. Don't know what to expect out of the driving of it. Because I don't recognize any design cues. I don't remember who submitted this. Let's have a look. Who submitted this car? No. Oh, there we go. My Count Cheese. So this is Mr. Cheese. Mr. Cheese does very good build and race cars. So we'll see how that goes. So I thought my race car didn't get in now. Have to post it for next week. And next week, Phil will be on controller. You know what? This seems so popular already, I might do a second control of stream. Oh, YouTube just updated how much that uh, 99 cent donation was. And it's now $1.45 Australian. Nice. It looks more like a McLaren F1. I do see a little bit of McLaren F1, kind of. It does look like a convertible roof, so I'm more inclined to say not to a McLaren. Uh, we've only got two seats, got a fairly detailed interior here. Much more detailed on the inside than it is on the outside. What have we got for the dash here? Multiple, multiple things here just to get the dash that they wanted. Nice. Kind of wish they had spent about as much detail on the outside as they did on the inside. The outside is not bad. Could have been better in my opinion. I also feel that this is like a 80s, 90s bodies, as I said. But this is clearly a much newer wing mirror because it's got like the indicators on the wing mirrors which didn't really happen until later. Also, uh, at the time, the indicator wouldn't have been allowed on moving body parts if it was a 90s car, so it would have needed to be on the side. Let's have a quick look. 
What year is this car? This is meant to be 2014 to 2020. I somehow disagree with that uh, declaration. Welcome, Fanny Faxbear. Feels like a kit car from the outside. Uh, you know what? Actually, I do get a little bit of kit car vibe. I, I agree with that. It's a weird mix of 90s and modern cars with the interior and headlights. You are right, actually, about the interior. Uh, welcome, Crownless, to the stream. Uh, second wheel setup we confirmed. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what I'm going to do. Um, cool car. Let's have a look a little bit more inside. That windshield wiper is not in the right place. Anyway, uh, the back end here looks pretty good. Usually there's some sort of like um, storage there, so I'm assuming this pulls down. Have they got like multiple things here? Yeah. They fitted in multiple things to get in the even the trim lines that they wanted. Very well done. A very much approved. Looks more futuristic to 2015. Sure. Hey, Vens, how's it going, bro? This car has lost a dime, a little bit, very little bit. Uh, then we got this Jaguar Lotus Cross looking thing. It look, I see a lot of Lotus design here, but the body shape itself looks a little bit more uh, Jaguar-esque being front engine with this sort of color design and all that sort of stuff. Is the engine actually in the front? Yes, the engine is not in the rear. Okay. So it just feels a little bit more Jaguar than Lotus-y, but it feels like they were trying to go for Lotus quite a bit here. I was muted. How did me not... I clicked on it. It should have unmuted me. I'm an idiot. Anyway, what I was saying is, yes, uh, these used to be source models, but now they've uh, moved on in their usage. Also, I don't really agree with it looking like a Maserati that much. TBR, I get what you're talking about, but not really. This is very much a lotus -y sort of uh, influence here. Yes, I know, I derps. Welcome, Adrian Vanis. How's it going? Film mute 86. God damn it. I'm never going to live that down, am I? Uh, let's go a little bit of Celine and the detail here. Ooh, I saw that. Mm. Let's see what we've got on this thing. We've got Centerlonk. Centerlonk? Centerlock alloy wheels. I don't like how the uh, center of the wheel protrudes beyond. You can do a center wheel offset. Probably would have helped that out a little bit. We've got three piston vented brakes on the front on double wishbone. And a very back-mounted engine. This must be... This feels very Jaguar and lotus -y in the way in which they just kind of got some engine and put it in here. So we got a single overhead cam V8. Which would be twin cam? Kind of? I don't know what the actual definition of a twin cam is. Colors are also very Lotus. Yes, very Lotus-y colors. Aston Martin, I kind of got a little bit, but still it feels very Jaguar-esque. Phil, what do you prefer? Deep dish or not deep dish? If it looks good on the car. I think super deep dish looks a little bit cringe in my opinion. Welcome pruny YouTube. How's it going? All right, so we got ourselves a very interesting engine. It's got a compact manifold on a race car, which is unusual then we got multi-point injection so this is feeling very 80s to 90s sort of time period we've got 
four valve per cylinder running off of a single cam each side. Interesting. I would not have picked that. Yeah. And then we've got ourselves our uh, tubular exhaust because it's a race car. That is absolutely fine. We don't have front drive, which is good. Like, I don't mind if you go all-wheel drive. Just know that I'm going to mark you down for points if you also call it a race car. Unless it's an old race car pre, like, mid-80s sort of time period where they saw a uh, Audi do it and dominate and people were like, yeah, we don't want to do that. So we're just going to ban it. Uh, so they would just go and complain. Also, automation's export of exhaust still completely scuffed. Let's go down to the rear and see what we got. We've got a diffuser starting quite early. We have double wishbone, vented brakes on the rear, one piston. Hopefully the brakes are still balanced. We shall see. But yeah, that doesn't look so bad. It looks very standardized. Uh, sort of car that's been now converted for race. I'm happy with that. The exterior on the back looks uh, looks usable. I do like how they've got like a the embossed sort of lettering. Good work. Welcome, Thomas. How's it going? Can we request full fill score today? Ugh. Maybe. Very British. They love weird design choices ah uh, sure i suppose you could say that i do like how you've cut out the uh body line here i think that's rather interesting and cool looking what are the details down here as well like we've got extra little ventilations down here which is very much a um uh, an 80s sort of race car design i hope that this car is actually 80s because i am enjoying it a lot if it was 80s as well it could also have cigarette endorsements on it which i would have loved if you had to put cigarette endorsements on it, mwah, would have just been absolutely fantastic. Welcome, Broken Ursa. How's it going? And Phil, please, I am making my car f for my fictional company, and I just want to know if a supercharger is better than a turbo for rear engine 3 seats 4 car hyperlight. If it's a hypercar, probably turbocharger. If it's a sports car, either. It depends. Modern, you're probably not going to get away with a supercharger anymore unless it's an American vehicle. Uh, anywhere else, you're probably not going to get a supercharger through regs. It's probably going to be like way too inefficient. Welcome Sawdust to the stream. How's it going? So many car will be marked down for realism next week because it's all on drive race cars because the road car was all drive and the thing has 90% wheel spin in AI gears. What are you talking about? Anyway, let's have a look to see what the interior is. I love that they've got a little slide open window. I've done this myself a few times and it's just so much fun to do. I love doing it. Looking very good, very clean. I very much approve. Got a roll cage in here, even if it's squished in, and unfortunately it has gone into the seat. I think... Yeah, maybe you could have, like, somehow gotten rid of the chassis and moved the, uh, center position over a little bit. Or maybe just done that in a different place. Yeah, that's, um, maybe a narrower seat. No, I don't know. Still, a cool interior. I do like it. I like the fact that you've gone for a, a strap. No handle, though. You've done very good, but not 100%. You've also got, like, a little screw or something here? Unclear. Oh, okay. That's meant to be a part of the bolt system you got going on there. Nice. Lots of cool little details on here. you got, like, air in, air out. Everything's looking fairly good. I also like this little bit of extra side skirt thing. Body colored side skirts, very 90s-esque, uh, which is a carry over kind of almost Bozazoku style from earlier years. Australian would call these seats far out. What? Is far out an Australian colloquialism? You think this center console got in the way? I'm thinking. They could have also just done the roll cage differently. 
But Twin Charge requires lots of J-Beam. I have only one automation mod. Even with... Uh, I do have the Supercharger mods. Welcome, Chris Games. Uh, that is updated now. I just have to get around to releasing a thing on how to... Uh, like, just release it. It's probably going to be a little short. Then we've got this car. The car from the thumbnail. And I was going to do the front. Considering the front on this looks really good. I'm not a fan of this song. Let's move on. Yeah, this will do. The front looks really good. But I saw how good the interior looked and I thought, you know what, I want to show the interior a little bit on the stream at least once. That carbon looks small, like really? Okay. Pontiac plus MG? I don't know about MG, but yes, it does look very Pontiac-esque. I'm a very big fan of this... Uh, grill sort of section. Is this all individual parts? Looks like it, yes. I'm not sure what they've used here, what um, fixtures they've used. They've done a really good job of like getting this all together to give the shape that they want. Like, that is a pretty good job. Mwah. Really, really good. Probably one of the best design elements we'll see here today. Maybe not the best because this one is pretty ballistic. We'll see if this is made out of 3D stuff or 3D model. There's a very big difference there. 3D model, really good, really uh, devoted sort of work if that's what's done. But working within the game limits like this, oh, well done. The closest thing I can think of that looks like that is 60s and 70s Dodge Charges and Challenges. I agree. It does look very American-esque. And then the low valence area, they've done their own thing. And I, uh, I like it. There's a lot of cool details. So the first thing they've done is they've cut this out. And then they've made their own kind of like inset sort of area and their own little splitter sort of thing. Nice. Moving around to the wheels. We've got punch steel. Nice. On single piston solid disc brake. This is going to be very much an empty engine. Uh, very much a, um, I'm assuming NASCAR sort of thing. So I'll take it to a circle track of some sort. So I don't know what engine it has. Maybe that silhouette looks like Corvette. I don't know about Corvette, sorry. I, did I say Corvette? I didn't mean to say Corvette. Solid rear axle with leaf spring. Perfect. Disc brake, uh, drum brakes. I, I love it. Well done. Uh, what is the next F1 you're going to make? Uh, I haven't decided yet. It will come out eventually. There's just lots of other things I want to do right now. Then I'll get back to the F1. It will happen. It, it'll get there. Engine is gone again, poof, yeah. Six liter pushrod V8 is the engine, oh, okay then. They stole my engine, can't have a uh, shit in Detroit. They stole my engine, can't have shit in Detroit. Oh, can't have shit in Detroit. I thought you said to have a shit in Detroit, I was so confused. It was like 75 bird Camaro, it looks very Camaro-esque, I agree. Gas crisis, <laughs> couldn't afford it. Welcome. Luca Mikos, how's it going? Alright, let's go inside. Oh, they they didn't have a roof to colour, so they coloured it themselves with patchwork. Yeah. Cool. And then they got the little badging on the side there. Very American. What? Mustang looking thing? Oh my god, bro, that's blasphemy. Or should I say blasphemy? Emmy, uh, uh, I'm funny. Cool interior. Very nicely done. Wrapped around, which is not very much a 70s sort of thing, but I suppose you can get away with that if you really want to. And it is a 2 plus 2, I'm assuming. Yeah, 2 plus 2. With just enough room in the back. Just enough. That looks to be a manual shifter as well with electric windows. Ooh, snazzy. So this is not a race car, but like a high-end road car that you could use probably for racing if you just took out some of the heavier stuff probably fun fact pepsi has a navy had a navy kind of they stripped it immediately for scrap metal you like the insides of this thing yeah kind of a mickey car half as detailed as this car there's a lot of detail if you didn't notice it these seats have their own inserts for like the uh way in which they wanted to have the seats done so those seats are also Fairly custom as well. A lot of detail here. 
And a nice. Welcome, not a thing. You missed a few cars. Pain for detail? Oh, yeah. The amount of effort they put in, like, uh, I kind of showed it a little bit earlier, but you also see that all of the interior is covered in uh, the interior trim cover stuff. So, very well done. Also, is this... I feel that this uh, sun visor is custom as well. But I, I can't tell. Welcome, cool boss. Cool boss, sorry. The mirrors are mirror material? They are? No. No, they're not. That's unfortunate. What about the rest here? Are they? Nope. Nope. Okay. Enough people have asked about the material, uh, the mirror material. I will do a tutorial on that at some point, I reckon. Oh, wait, hold on. I saw a reflection. No. No, I don't think that's actually a reflection. They've even got the, um, oh my god handles. Nice. The wheel upon spawning, the pedal, the shifter. Yeah, there's a lot here. There's a lot here. I also am looking at this and feel that they may have modified this and then the steering wheel might move. It just looks a little too perfect. So we'll see that when that gets around. Oh, all of the gauges including the indicator stop. Nice. All right. Then we've got this little thing. Just ever so scraped in, uh, in getting into place. That one guy that, uh, did the Porsche thing had have uploaded the right sort of uh, file, they would have gotten in instead of this. Off topic, look up the DS4. I'm um, not really much of a Nintendo fan, honestly. I like, I like Nintendo, but yeah. I want to see modern design of that muscle car. Sure. Look at hood emitter. Look at hood, a hood, a, what? hood ometer? Oh, I completely missed that. Oh, that's cool. That is a very rare thing as well. I have actually seen one of those sorts of things in real life. I'm drawing a blank as to on what car it was because I was so goddamn young. But I remember seeing it and being like, Wow, that's cool, Dad. Or something like that. Citroen, not interested. Anyway. Uh... Let's go into a little bit of what we're seeing here. Very under detail. The headlights are okay. I do like kind of the shapes working. But the headlights are like very angular and uh, very blocky. Then this very swoopy sort of bottom area here. And then these absolute blank areas. I mean, you could have even put like little extra park lights down here. With little extra indicators on the front. Which would have been very common for this sort of time period. Uh, put any sort of design detail here. Anything to break up the... Simple design of just the body itself. He did make a modern version of that muscle car. I think I remember was 2000 horsepower Wildcat. No oh god, no. K car? Maybe. I don't know. I, there's no number plate, so I can't tell. Bumpers are full plastic material molded and designed to be featureless. If you say so. I like the design of the DS4. Oh, uh, that oh my god handles. Yeah. Uh, we used to always call it the oh my god handle because, yeah, we used to go out rallying a lot. Because we had a paddock when we were young and we used to just drive around in paddocks a lot. Phil, are you going to make another Minecraft world? Yes, that is coming. Uh, there's a little bit different this time though. Hello, I'm 40 minutes late. Well, don't see a doctor yet. You're probably not pregnant. You're probably just a little bit delayed if you're that late. And welcome, Moss, to the stream. By the way, I'm also curious about how to... How your little K-car drives? Uh, are you interested in making your Williams F1 from 1993? Maybe, I don't know. We'll see. I've got a list of cars that I'm doing. I'm not going to reveal it. Because the moment I reveal what cars I'm doing, people are going to bug me. And harass me. And people have harassed me. For things that I said that I have done. Oh, sorry. That I was going to do. Or I might do in the future. People harass me for it. So I just... I generally don't say what I'm doing. And that's why a lot of YouTubers don't say what they're doing. It's because they get harassed the moment they do it. I say it. And like they have a change of mind. Something comes up. It doesn't work out the way that they want to do. And they just don't release the video. Or any of that sort of stuff. Lots of things can happen. And then you just get harassed. So yeah, we tend 
uh, to not talk about these sorts of things. Anyway, here we got a single piston vented, so interesting, on a uh, McPherson strut. So very much a budget car to start with. No engine in the front and no front drive. So this is a very short wheelbase rear or mid engine. Will be video where you drive your Lotus? What, what are you talking about? Anyway, what is this meant to be? What is that? Oh, it's meant to be like a suction area to bring air up into here. That looks very inefficient, but okay. And then a massive heavy looking V6. Once again, single overhead cam valve valve per cylinder. I want to point out how rare this is. Single overhead cam with more than two valves per cylinder? Very rare. Only a few companies ever have done it. And it's not very good to do. It's less efficient. The only reason you'd do it is if there was some sort of restriction on you building engines and you need to stay within a budget maybe or a misunderstanding of how engines work from the car company, which happens. Next year, F1 is coming to your home country. Oh, interesting. What country is that? Have you for up anything with your MG? Moving on. Hey, Phil, do you know who Automotive Flux is? If you have a look at my, post, uh, my um, videos in the past, you'll see that they and I have done a video together. I don't know the name of company. Huh? You will harass me, don't worry. Oh, please don't. I have been harassed, and it is not fun. Uh, about harassing, I got harassed by some trash talker in the comments had to block the guy. <laughs> 31 views? Yeah, that's a good view count. South Africa. Oh, that's interesting and controversial. Because of the... Uh, a lot of the issues happening there. What is it about F1 and going to countries where there's like lots of controversial stuff happening? What is going on with the FIA? I don't understand. Did I say for I meant got? Mm-hmm. I think seeing that Automotive Flux video was how I came to your channel. No, you've been here a lot longer than that, Firebird. Have you done anything with your MG yet? Oh, uh, I've got a lot of parts. It's just really freaking cold. I recorded one video going over all the issues and I didn't realize until the end that the camera had stopped halfway through. So I have to record that again, but it's just way too cold here. Like I've worked in the cold of winter here in Australia before and your hands just hurt so much every day. And I don't want to go through that. So yeah, we're going to leave that for now. I got harassed in the past to uh, comments, but I pretty much just hear their comment and react like it was a positive thing. Yeah, some people take it too far. Like they harass you with emails, all that kind of grab, uh, uh, garbage. I used to which out automotive flux. Okay, welcome Octane. Hey, money's luring the FIA. Yeah. It's money luring the FAA, and I think that's probably not a great way of doing it. Also, mechanical fuel injection on this. This is a very eclectic sort of engine with cast headers. So this is maybe not the race version of the car. I mean, it looks like a race version of the car. Maybe this is a homologation special, for like mass produced, so they went with a cast header from like an engine they had laying around and just couldn't be bothered. How cold is Australian winter? Well, considering that Australian houses have like ventilation everywhere just to let heat out because it gets very hot during summer. Uh, and nobody really has heaters and we have some of the highest uh, electricity prices in the world. So running heaters is very extremely expensive. Uh, it is currently six degrees Celsius and 91% humidity. So not only is it cold, you'll very much feel that freaking cold. It is... Ooh. It is very chilled right now uh, in here. My computer is warming up the room a little bit. I got uh, tape over the vent in the corner of the room to keep a little bit more warmth in here. It's worked a little bit. The room is not frosty cold all the time. The small Japanese production V6 1.8 liter? Crate engine? That doesn't make sense. 
That's the juxtaposition of terms. Used to watch Automotive Flux? Cool. Oh, humidity, my old friend. We don't get humidity during summer here in South Australia, which is lucky. But humidity during winter, oh my god, it makes everything so much colder. Problem here too in the Basque country. If you say so, I don't know what the Basque country is. But that's just lovely, you know the weather is great when the water on the floor freezes. It sometimes does freeze. I want to see Phil make a new model of cars he made. Heh! <laughs> see so make a new model of cars he made. I, it doesn't make great sense. Anyway. Let's move on. We're never going to get through all these guys if I'm just reading chat all day long. You guys can keep talking and I'll just see chat occasionally. But yeah, uh... Is that a... Yeah, that's a double wing. Interesting. Maybe they just wanted more downfall so they added an extra wing. There's no underbody on this. And that wing would not actually be a wing. It'd be more like a, um... Uh... A spoiler. So not for downforce, but to instead reduce lift on the rear. So, even though that may be a design thing, it kind of almost looks as if you're trying to use that to create downforce, which that wouldn't have been used for back then. Would have just been to reduce left. Region in North Spain. Ah, okay. I used to think you were an automation demon G staff because your cars are so advanced. <laughs> no, 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 no. I just like to do weird, cool things. Weren't you going to electrify the MG? Yeah, unfortunately, the last time I looked up electrification parts was probably like late 2019. And uh, after I got the car, I looked up the parts and noticed that the prices had skyrocketed for used parts. Everyone out there, their, every man and their dog was like, you know what, we need a, a project to do over Corona. You're playing and German game? This? No, no. This is a BMNG, where it's everything is USA. Every map, USA. Every car, USA. Now, they say that the map is Italy, but it's Italy, USA. And then they've got like a, the, um, the German test course is actually Germany, North Carolina. Or something like that. I don't know. I want to see you make a new generation of cars you made in automation. Still unclear on fully what you're saying here. There. Uh, I do like this sort of design. That's pretty cool. I know this from somewhere. I know I know this fixed ship. I think you've done a pretty good use of it there. I also like the fact that you've got like a cover that you can see the engine underneath. Even if this filter doesn't look really sporting. Maybe you could have put something over it. I don't know. Made it look a little bit more interesting. I love the little map light on the back there. That's interesting. A full glass roof? Hmm, I don't know if the glass roof would have been so big on such an old car. I'm guessing that this is 90s, so it would have been a little bit more Targa-esque, which would have been like, cover the driver and the windshield, everything else glass maybe, or maybe even um, T-tops. Don't know. Inside, looks good. We've got, once again, the pull tabs, but you've got a handle. Sure. And electric windows. Why would you have a cloth pull tab and electric windows? They're contradicting terms. That doesn't make sense. Also, pull tabs are usually more towards the outside. Uh, cause there you get better leverage, I think. Phil, did you saw the Matador MH2 from the country Slovakia? It's real cool car. Never heard of that. You know what? We'll have a quick look. Hopefully it's related to the stream. Huh. I have not seen this car. It looks... Weird. Like, its proportions are just... Enough wrong. But a lot of it looks really good. It looks like the whole thing is, like, a machined out of aluminium. Which I think looks pretty cool. But it's giving me a little bit of, um... Like, in its disproportionate sort of proportions. Yeah, the Lotex C1000. Well, it's like a really interesting looking car, but it just doesn't look right. And that's kind of what I'm getting here. Like, a lot of it looks good. From that angle, it looks really good. There, things are looking a little bit weird. 
Like, the way this glass comes down like that looks strange. I get that they're going for something new. Sure. Don't want to be like everybody else. Cool. Great. I love it. But then you also got to realize that cars are all looking the same because people have decided what they like and what they don't like. Uh, that, that looks okay from that angle. Actually, it looks a lot better from this angle. I like that. Anyway, unrelated to the stream though. Weight saving? What are we talking about? Weight saving? But they've got electric windows, which is very heavy. Looks like the new Italian supercar and beam? No, not really. Free the world from France? What? Oh, you got France between you. What's the hottest temperature you have? For me, it's 110 C. No, you haven't experienced 110 degrees C. You mean 110 degrees Fahrenheit. The hottest I've ever experienced is probably 52, I think, degrees. Oh, I don't have no more on. Hundred and twenty-five is the hottest I've ever experienced. Except I was on track, and I think the track temperature was around sixty to sixty-five. Uh, I was a marshal at that time uh, on the track, so about one hundred and forty-three is probably the hottest I've ever experienced. I was a volunteer, I wasn't a worker, so they could just be like, if you want to stop working, that's fine, we'll just run it in a different way. Otherwise, you could stay out there if you want. I got a free shirt, so I was happy. No, you don't mean 100 degrees Celsius. Oh, okay. When you put your hand on the electric stove, that makes sense. Oh, you mean in a sauna. Oh, okay, that's different. A sauna is different. You're designed for that. It's got humidity and air moves around. What's the coolest car you've seen in person? I'm in South Australia. We don't get a lot of cool cars. A lot of people will really like the fact that I saw a, um, a show car winner. A show winner? Uh, a show car? Of a ultra wide bodied Supra in about, I think it was 2005. I got driven around in it. That was pretty cool. But Supras here are very common. Uh, they're not worth as much here, but since America, they've exploded in popularity. Australia has followed suit and they've gone up in value. Um, the coolest car? We don't really get many supercars in Australia. So probably like a Lamborghini Gallardo, like an early one. I suppose I have been to America. And I was driven around in an Aston Martin. But it is so long ago, I do not remember what sort of one it was. Uh, I, I just remember it being kind of blocky. Uh, Jaguar, like the V12 front engine Jaguar, whatever that one is. The last I've seen in person is the EB110. Oh, I love the EB110. That was a um, one of my dream cars as a kid. Off topic, look up the Hudson Hornet. No, I'm good. Anyway, that is a cool car. I was in a con Croatia, 50 degrees. I was dead. Yeah, 50 degrees is pretty hot. It was dry here in South Australia, but it was also windy, which meant that uh, you were drying up. So the moment you sweat, the sweat would go, which would need you dehydrate. The problem is, it was also windy, coming from the northern, sort of like a central parts of Australia, and uh, it uh, would immediately take all the sweat off your skin, which means you would dry up immediately, and you would just dehydrate so quickly. Uh, also, like um, the radiation heat coming from the sun in Australia, which is a little bit hotter, things like ozone uh, damage that we've had over the past century. Uh, it's getting better, but yeah, still a problem. You have a list of cars to ask Phil to look up the stream, don't you? <laughs> I mean, I asked at the end of my, um, whatchamacallit stream, the Formula V stream, if anybody wanted to send me things to look at. Nobody was there to say anything, so we just ended the stream when it was done. Coolest car I've seen in person is a Ferrari P4. Oh, cool! Now we're moving on to our third orange car, 
very, now this I would say looks very McLaren-esque. Mostly like a, this sort of swoopy design kind of with this. And the fact that everything is like a little bit soft and the triangular like odd shaped headlights. Coming to the back end. Still looking very McLaren-esque. I just, I grew up in a different era. Where if they had to release McLaren in the 90s, people would have been like, oh, okay. And not liked it, probably, for the most part. When I saw this car, I thought it was a McLaren for a second. Yeah, it does buzz a little bit. Wing too far out of bounds again. It's just within body. Oh, but you know what? It's too high. It's also too far back. So, not all race series, is, but... 99.99% of race series have rules on uh, wings having to be within the bounds of the main silhouette of the body. Uh, there are a few open categories where you're allowed to do whatever you want, which includes Pike's Peak, and within reason, you can also, I believe, do it, uh, but don't quote me on this, at that hill climb. That showed off that weird fan electric car in England. That that little short hill climb. That has like the hail bells on the side. I can't remember what it's called. Lotus hypercar? No, not really. But there was a Lotus hypercar, yes. And it was pretty cool looking for the day. Not aged well. So in person, Eurus and it was unbelievable. I'm not a fan of four-wheel drives or any sort of SUV. I feel like that wing wouldn't really be on race cars for that reason also. Yes. Good wood. That's the one. Thank you, you two. Carl. Also, welcome Carl to the stream. <sighs> Look up the High Phil X. Nice. Festival of Speed. Yep. Low Savaya. Would you call that a hypercar? I'd probably call that one a supercar, not probably a hypercar. It's got a lot of power, but that does not make it a hypercar. So we got four piston carbon ceramic brakes on double wishbone, no front drive, which means that they're running the gauntlet of trying to make this just rear wheel drive and work. Interesting. Then at the back here, we've got three piston brakes uh, on normal vented. You may as well make all of them carbon ceramic if you're going carbon ceramic. You want to have on good cars like these, a unified handling characteristic. It's probably the way in which I would probably explain it. Also, is that wheel arch out of alignment? Yeah, the wheel arch is a little out of alignment. Um, if you've ever make it, made an older car, we've got disc brakes, uh, brakes? disc brakes in front and drum brakes in the rear. You notice that the rears lock up a lot. It's because there's like an imbalance in act of the brakes and then the rears will overheat and then the rears won't lock up and then you'll be putting all your pressure on the fronts and then the fronts will lock up all that sort of stuff temperature control for brakes is also very important so especially on a race car you want to keep them unified they should have both been carbon ceramic brakes if you're going to do that or both steel for a race car like this probably both carbon ceramics i think you already made a gt3 or touring car i've made a few gt3s yes I don't like pointless SUVs, so basically I don't like crossovers because they can't go... I just don't like them. Most people will buy a big off-roader or an SUV or all that sort of stuff and never go off-road or got off-road once, which you probably would have been better off just renting. All you're doing after that, or if you just buy one and not do that, is getting in the way of every other road user that doesn't want to be selfish and use an SUV and wants to enjoy a car that handles good. It is such a pain in the butt cheeks. If you have one of those sorts of vehicles, like an SUV or something like that, you are selfish. Also, Phil, are you seeing the chat delayed? Yeah, there's always a delay with chat. If we're going to be pitching cars to look at, then I say the... Gallardo Bravio is cool. All right, I'll take your word for it. In the back here, we've got a little bit of a roll cage. Can we see that? Why is it orange? No, we can't. Okay. Fully blocked off. Oh, you missed a spot. Fail. Uh, we've got, oh, wow. Uh, heat shielded with gold on the back here. Push rod suspension. Twin turbo. Individual throttle body. V8. Four or five valve cylinder. Four valve cylinder. Good. Very sort of 
a normal engine here and big F off turbos. Hopefully this thing is not overpowered. If it's overpowered, it's gonna become really tricky to handle, but it's also got mufflers on it. I'm assuming they wanted to save my hearing. Thank you, I very much appreciate. All right, let's go in and see what we've got on the inside. Hey, we've got a little window again, nice. And basic, but a very functional sort of dash. They've got the floating sort of thing, which we first saw in Volvos, nice, I like, I like. In Indonesia, it's basically mandatory to have an off-roader because your roads are really bad and outside the city roads basically don't exist. Fair enough. But I'm saying in Australia. Gold shielding, now that is very McLaren. Yeah! Are you going to use these cars? Yeah, yeah, we're going to use them eventually. I'm just going over them first, so then when we jump into reviewing them, all I have to do is drive. The rear looks like from an LMP1 car. No, not really. LMP1 cars, the back end comes down a lot. And then there's like a very small uh, cross section of the actual back end sort of area, which reduces the amount of um, drag at the back. A little bit of lift, but they don't mind because there's a lot of downforce. The floating console does add a lot. I agree. It does add a lot of interest to it. And then they've got like a weird thing at the back end of that sure but i also do like the fact that they thought about putting the controls within hands reach and all that sort of stuff fire extinguisher nice cool weird that they've squished out the pedals but sure okay they were going for a thing single windshield wiper looks the right size all that sort of stuff okay cool i do likey likey and in indonesia, uh, in indonesia good roads don't want to exist fair enough then we've got this. It looks like a circuit racing, uh, one of those like NASCAR ute things. The uh, NAS ute or something. I don't know. Welcome, Javo, to the stream. How's it going? This looks like it's going to be interesting, and we're going to break out the uh, oval track for this as well. Even though it's a garbage track, I'm going to use my track for these. If, if I've still got it enabled, I'm not sure. It may not be in my thing right now. NAS cute? <laughs> I like. NASCAR, but no spine? If you say so. Uh, let's see what we've got in here. So we've got decent detail on the front, decent air in, not too much drag on it. No side indicators, which means they've either been replaced with fiberglass paneling around, or they've forgotten to put them on, but I'm assuming uh, they've also removed the wing mirrors. We've got punch steel wheels, okay, and then four piston vented disc brakes, double wishbone, and a big massive F off carbureted push rod V8. Mwah. Perfect Amundo. Every car is orange, did I accidentally join the fail race stream? <laughs> nice, I like it. That's a Chevy Silverado. It does look a lot like a pre-made, like a vehicle that exists yet. And Chevy, a Chevy Silverado sounds about right, I think. Off topic, look up the first gen Honda Life. That's just the Honda Jazz, right? I do like the Honda Jazz. America. Yeah, I agree, Christmas Shaman. Welcome, well soon, Mayhem Entertainment. How's it going? I play everything 16. Welcome to the stream. So, big, hefty engine, big, hefty carburetor. Is this just a single carburetor as well? Yes, it is. So, probably like during the um, fuel restriction era of uh, cars. Love it. The life is different? I don't know what you mean. Anyway, coming down. We have no front drive, which is good. Down to the back. Full underbody. Solid rear axle with coil spring. Interesting. Then vented disc brakes of some sort. Automation fails again. Also, those are semi-slicks. Decent enough. I would love a slick option, though. Cars entered non-orange will be immediately disqualified. Ha <laughs> ha! 
Favorite color was purple? Oh dear. All cars should be orange from now on. Please no. We should all agree on a color of our submissions each week. Oh, I hope not. See, every as you said, like this looks like um thing now. If everyone does like Mouye Blue, everyone's gonna blame me for like, oh look, he's got being Mouye. You thought NASCARs have smaller engines. I think they have five liter. I think you're right about that. Let's go blue next week. Oh dear. How do you put text in the tires? Um, some wheel mods have a little bit of like extra text around it and it just adds it onto the thing. So if you have a look, it's not actually uh, in replacement of what's meant to be there. And it sticks out just a little bit. As you can see there, it's uh, not actually on the tire itself. I could do a video on how to do that, but I also don't want to because working with uh, textures and materials in BeamNG, nightmare. 5.8 liter, if you say so. You already know people next week all blue, baby blue cars. I hope not. Anyway, then we got this uh, Mazda MX-5 from Ekaimen. Had to think about it there for a second. Once again, very simple design, but that's just how they do it. Uh, front side indicator, but no uh, rear part indicator. No front indicator as well. All fail. No, not the Honda Jazz. Then I don't know what you're talking about. And I'm not going to look it up right now. We have alloy wheels, smaller disc brakes, I feel. Single piston vented disc brakes, double wishbone. Coming around to here, we have a four cylinder. 16 valve. And it is four valve per cylinder. Good sort of normal engine with a tuned exhaust, but naturally aspirated. I'm assuming this is also meant to be, once again, a drift car, because it is Ekaimen. Let's come down to the rear, see what we've got. We've got double wishbone, single piston solid disc, okay. Huh, interesting. Then the rear looking very much a Mazda Miata sort of thing. Back in this day, it probably would have had a, um, a colored diffuser to be a body colored. The rest of it looks fairly decent. No lip or anything like that as well. I don't know. Do they usually come with lips on Mazdas of this era? I'm not sure. The Honda Life is an K car from the 70s. Oh, okay. Mazda MX-5 and? Yeah. Miata blink blink. You mean wink wink? Now, we've got this absolute behemoth of a car that wants to kill my computer. But my computer is doing a little bit better now. We're getting 19 FPS, uh, 20 FPS. Yay! Anyway, what have we got here? It No, this is looking like it's made out of all 3D parts. Yep. Oh my God. Look at that mess. You were looking at this earlier? Oh my God. Look at all of that, just to get the shape that they wanted. I had thought, because from a distance, it looked like this was all, uh, like, kind of one thing, and they'd 3D modeled it. But nope, they've done a nightmare build. My god, the amount of effort and time that that would have take, taken to make it look correct? Oh dear, like... Look at those smooth lines. Only a little bit is showing up, but that is very, very well done. Respect? Yeah, very much respect here. They've gone for a design that they want. Though, lots of aerodynamic drag. This would have actually not been very good on the road. Wait, no. On the road. On a racetrack, this probably would have uh, created way too much drag. The big thing is, is generally the rule is, is not so much like... How, how small it is does affect drag, but also, um, uh, it's not about the wedge shapedness most of the time. It's mostly about how big the radius of edges are. So the radius here is almost zero. So it's just a straight up angle. It probably is just a straight up angle. And that creates most of the drag. So a lot of this is just creating huge amounts of drag. Also, what have they done here? What is this? Huh. 
They didn't want to just use the mod fixture for that? Weird. Dude, I just gave up on automation. I can no longer play after this. Ha <laughs> I drove this car. It's insane. It handles amazingly. I've tested this car and I can say this thing would kill you. That looked like Intenza Emotion? If you say so. I don't know what that is. There's a lot of detail on here. Like, even this section here. I saw lots of parts just then. Yeah. Look at all of that in there. Just to get the shapes that they wanted. Three lives wasted for PC Destroyer. <laughs> it would kill you amazingly. We're gonna try it out. We have... Six piston carbon ceramic brakes on the front. We have front drive and no front engine push rod suspension coming down to the rear. So this is not meant to be a race car. This is meant to be a hypercar by the looks of it. We have four really big turbos on a V12 with four piston carbon ceramic brakes on the rear. We shall see whether that is a mistake or not with our brake balance when we get into actually trying it out, though. Our engine is... 4-valve per cylinder and twin plenum. That is a detailed engine bay. This is all individual things that they have done themselves to give the design that they want. And for some reason, there's a mesh inside here that they didn't need to put on, but they just did. God, there's a lot of detail on here. Is that where the exhaust is meant to be coming out? Or does it come out here somewhere? No, it does come out here. No, nope, come... Oh, okay, that's where it comes out. Interesting. Dangerous for both car and PC and yourself? Yeah. Dangerous car for both your PC and yourself. The Apollo car in Forza Horizon 5 is, if you say so, dangerous car, but yeah, uh, it looks like one of those quarter speed record engines. If you say so. That's wild. Rear wing, a lot more detail again. What? Just... Huh. Huh. Anyway, they got a lot of detail right here. What is that? It's something. What is happening? There is something bugged out about this car. Yeah, alright. Let's have a little bit more of a look at this engine. Is it actually quad turbo? Do we have turbos on both sides? Yes, we do. Hmm. Wow. That's impressive. And then the back end. Like, all of these. Nicely put in here, exactly how they wanted the detail. This person was dedicated to make the car that they wanted to make. Rear diffuser is fairly functional. Looks like a race diffuser because it's not going like the full length of the car. A lot of cool stuff here. I know this flag, but I'm drawing a blank on what it is. If anybody could tell me, that would probably be super helpful. And they made it out of their own things. Fixtures. And that, yeah, that is all individual fixtures as well. I'm guessing that's patchwork. Wow. A lot of detail. So what is this meant to be? There's some pipes exiting here that go... No way. Okay. So it's meant for something, but I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> the interior. Cool detail. Nice seat. I don't know if this is... I believe, yes, that is a custom seatbelt that they've made all the parts individually. Oh my god. I wonder if this is all modded as well. That is a lot of work. Philippines. Ah, my partner's uh, part Philippines. Think there'll be a lot of lag on braking? Very possibly. Yeah, it, it seems that braking with lots of light fixtures for some reason lags Demon G out.
the hypercar it has a luxury interior which makes me think that this is like half hyper half super spiper car man want one thing and it's naughty pc that handle trajano if you say so yeah pretty good interior i wonder how much of this all works like they've got cool details all through here lots of stuff fuel gauges and i don't know if that's meant to be invisible but it is we'll see if this all works later on it's all set to zero so i don't know if this is actually working or not did you mean one thing and it's disgusting anyway nice car they haven't gone for working mirrors i still have the monopoly on that apparently We've got this car back in the news again today. They have said that they've fixed a lot of their things based on the feedback that we gave them last week. So we shall see. Uh, we have six piston, carbon ceramic brakes, double wishbone, only rear drive this time. Engine is still canted up. Three, six piston, carbon ceramics on push rod in the rear. And the engine is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, V16. And four valve cylinder, naturally aspirated, individual throttle bodies. This thing hopefully isn't too overpowered. They said it was about, I think, 500 kilowatts, which would put it right in uh, LMHC category uh, range, which would be really great if that was actually the case. Because, um, uh, we could then, like, actually compare it to, uh, like, an actual thing that we know. V16, boy? Yeah. Also, apparently, there was an update to the, uh, secret message that they put on here. I'm gonna turn my heater back on for a little bit. I'll splurge the money. I've been donated $1.45. Uh, there is still no interior because of weight reduction. If you say so. Then we got this car, which I accidentally changed the color on. So let's uh, tap around to this car. Control W. Color. Is there a reset button? No. What if we go here? Reset. Nope. Okay, it doesn't reset the color, unfortunately. On the front, part of our headlight is cut off, but it looks like that's meant to be deliberate, which is weird. Sure. I do like a lot of the detail on here. They got like a slit sort of bumper. And then they've gone for like an aluminium cap on the top there. Very scratched. Fun fact, the yo-yo was invented in the Philippines. Really? Cars this week. <laughs> Mercedes Lancia, maybe? Eh, I would have said more British. Because they're already using like a uh, Jaguar-esque sort of body. Uh, let's go in and see what we've got on the inside. Is that meant to be the indicator down there? I wonder. We turn... Not only indicator on the side. I believe if you're going to have a quarter indicator, you still need to have an indicator on the front. I'm not entirely sure of this time period, but I feel that that's correct. Then we've got a very Jaguar-like engine. Also very much European engine. A straight six with fuel injection. Multi-point, individual throttle bodies with a cast manifold on the exhaust. So not very Jag engine, I don't feel. This feels a little bit more um, BMW than anything else. What have we got again? We got McPherson strut, vented two piston brakes. That feels right. Feels perfect. Go to color and press default color. Is that a thing? Not a thing. Yeah. Lord, the car makes birds and cats aggressive and they gang up it and scratch its fenders? What? Weird things are happening. Did you know that Ferrari's first engine was 1.4 litre V12? I would have guessed that it was probably a V12, but I didn't know it was so small. Mm 
what Murica mean? Marcia? What? I think Jag used I6s and I know Aston Martin. Yes, Aston Martin also did. This doesn't look like an Aston Martin, though. Anyway, we got semi trailing suspension, which feels right, I suppose. Single piston, solid disc brake. So the disproportionate rear brakes, absolutely fine. I don't mind using bumpers for skirts, but that's more of a 90s thing. But even still, if you are going to do that, uh, probably don't have one that stands off like this. That doesn't feel right. Very weird. Back end looks very much like they're taking design cues from another car from earlier. Now, I saw this on the front and I was willing to say okay on that because it's a bit of a weird design. But to have that design on the rear here as well looks just weird. Am I wrong in that? Does it just look strange to have that on the rear? I think you can press user, then it will go back to the original user color. There is no user button. The only button is add color to presets. There is no user button here. Wait, hold on, I saw a thing. Ah, default one. Okay, that's the color that it's meant to come in. There we go. I think you were, yeah, I think you were right, just didn't explain it well. DB5 used six pot in the Jags, the XK6. Oh, okay. It's the middle factory color, under factory. If you could become the uncontested ruler of the Philippines, would you rename it to the Philippines? No. Anyway, let's see what we've got on the inside here. Very full interior, but the seats are way too high. Look at that gap. What were you thinking? Oh my god. Those seats are way too high. Uh, the one rule to the very start when you start to do these sorts of things is the shoulder line should be right just ever so slightly peeking up above there is generally about right for shoulder height on cars. Those seats way too high, and the floor is way too high. Also, like this wood dash, maybe not right. Just gonna put that out there. Also, wood over this, which was probably an airbag, depending what year this car is. Yeah, not right either. Uh, depending whether this is 90s or whatever, they didn't really go for like dashboard molding in to center console sort of design until much later for the most part only a few car companies ever did that usually the dash would come down then in and then like a there'd just be like parts connecting the center console sort of to the dash but it wasn't really joined up like that it's like the tesla kind of faux wood yeah i agree it doesn't look right here someone use an ai generator images for this car if you say so if someone is 180 centimeters and he's sitting in this car he's like two meters <laughs> okay i think it focuses on the outside yeah not a bad interior it's just wrong and disproportionate all that sort of stuff rears are fitting in quite nicely a little bit jank but it works and then you've just completely and utterly gotten rid of the middle center seat You've done weird things here, bro. Not a fan. Also, the reflections on here are very, very reflective. But then the mirror itself, not reflective. Great! Love it. Alrighty. What's up, just joined? Welcome that dude, Darren. We've just done a cursory look over of all of the cars. Pretty sure... This is just a quick makeshift one for the outside look. Potentially. Oh, you know what? That bulge starting there doesn't feel right. It feels as if that bulge should start further back. Am I wrong in that? Yeah, that doesn't feel right to me. 
The front looks pretty good though. I do like this. And it's got like uh, the headlights here, but also like a pop-up area. I think that's cool. Not sure about the line separation, but eh, I suppose, whatever. You do you. I do, I do like ugh, the front area. But yeah, I don't feel that bulge starting so far forward. Strange factory color for a car? Yes. A lot of cars don't normally come with a metallic color as well. Uh, that's generally an expensive optional extra. Been in the Philippines to the Philippines, if you say so. Uh, yeah. That's the wrong thing. Meant to take this. All right, I should get ready now and put the race rig into position. Usually the hyper supercars have those colors. Not really. I don't think most Ferraris that are in red or yellow have metallic in them. I think they're just a plain color. Orange is superior. Apparently this week, five of them and then one we changed. You love Poland? Okay. So did Germany. So much that they invaded it first. Your clothes look great on you, by the way. Oh, thank you. You're about to not see them, though. Please, uh, Phil, please don't drive the Wildcat on an oval. It doesn't do it justice. It's just a... It, it is fun cornering. Drifty, but not a straight-up drift guy, if you say so. You're in my Volvo? Oh, dear. All right. I'm going to put my microphone down whilst I put my race rig in place. Uh, BRB. Ooh, this is cold seat. Oh. Been sitting in my uh, normal seat for so long. I've gotten this one. Very cold. Oh, Pippa's groaning at me. I'm sorry, Pippa. Am I making too much noise for you to sleep? Yeah. No, you can't jump up on me. I'm in the middle of a stream. All right. That was the wrong button. Hello, Pippa. You want attention, do you? I'm sorry that you can't jump up on my lap. Oh, I'm sorry, Pippa. I just got my dog down here. Just showing me a lot of affection. I'm also noticing that that screen is not able to be read from here. Eh. Eh. I might rearrange this. Ever so slightly. Ah, don't lick my hand! There we go. Okay, 
now I can see what I'm doing. Okay. Let's go to a track. We got the first car. That looks like very much I want to take that to automation test track. My computer is lagging. Dogman86? Yes, the Soviet invaded Poland. Uh, I thought it was Germany in World War II. I don't know what the USSR did or anything like that. So cute, what breed? Um, Dashhound Cross or something. Very small, very clingy sort of dog. Very cool. I think I am the only dirt track car for this stream. If you say so, does this have... Good, it does have first person, no steering wheel control. We're just going to put my steering wheel lock to lock. Otherwise, it will uh, sometimes just go out of alignment. So I have to go lock to lock when I'm driving at at least some point to fix that. Just get a better computer. <laughs> oh, I wish I could just afford a better computer. Need more donations, guys. More money, please. Um, uh, I don't want an app, do I? No. What do I want? I want to go to options. I'm going to go to gameplay? Oh, good. Okay. Clutch assist is off. Is this a manual? Why, why do we not have... Oh. It hides all the things. Wait. My pedals aren't working. Options. Controls. Hardware. Logitech. Why is my controller not working? What? Like, I'm getting force feedback. Do I have to... I, I think I have to restart the game quickly. This will happen sometimes. Beam and G is not a perfect game. Replug the racing rig? I find that has never worked. Generally, restarting is really the only fixes. For me, at least. Germany and the Soviet Union invaded Poland. Oh, okay. I was late to the stream because I wanted gaming birthday party. It was fun. Okay, cool. I hope it was a good party. I haven't been to a party in quite a while. BeamNG has PNP support. Just replay. It doesn't work for me. My. Like, when I launch BeamNG and go straight into the photo scene thing, it doesn't go full screen for me. I have to go into the settings, not change anything, but just hit apply on the graphics. And then it goes to full screen. BeamNG is not perfect for me. What just happened? Weird. Alright. Let's try this again, shall we? Alright, let's try unplug and replug. Oh, that actually worked this. What the hell? That is so arbitrarily random. Uh, so. It is not a manual, it is some sort of other control device. I wish the gauges didn't turn off. I can barely hear this car. The suspension feels way too soft. I don't- I, I can't tell what like RPM we're at. I don't know what gear I'm in. I can't hear anything. The reflections of the mirrors are actually working. They're just not very good quality. Why can I not see? Hold on. Uh, let's bring up UI apps, edit, 
hide-in cockpit. Okay. Turn that off as well. Turn that off. Okay. There we go. Manual one. Okay. Not the fastest gear shifts in the world. Little bit of understeer, but okay. Oh, a little bit of tail out in the exit. We have no ESC. Fairly fast. We're going to be going 300 kilometers now by the end here. Not quite. And it is... Stable. A little bit up the steering. Ah, oh, should have turned in a little bit sooner. Would have been better. I feel like the gear ratios are just kind of weird. Like I'm already in third by a hundred kilometers an hour. It feels all right. Just it's very quiet. I need to turn it up. Uh, audio. Usually 50 is where I leave it, but I feel I have to turn this one up to 100. There we go. Now I can actually hear what I'm doing. Oh, it gets a little bit sloppy. I feel the suspension is a little too soft, but I suppose if this is meant to be like a, a super tourer, ah! like a Ferrari sort of thing where it's just like a little bit soft, but not like a top end Ferrari. then maybe the suspension is soft enough, but soft enough for a 90s car. This body is wallowing around, I can tell from the inside. It feels a little bit numb. Suspension feels at least handleable. That was my bad, I braked too late. Didn't really know the car that well and already tried to do strange things to it. Which one do I want to press? That was the wrong one. That'll be fine. Very drift happy. Oh my god. Very sloppy suspension. This interior is quite nice. I mean, it looks fairly good. It almost looks as if they wanted to animate it, to be honest. Looks very good. I have a tutorial on it. It's quite simple. Don't be afraid of it. It just takes a little bit of time. It's mostly tedious work, more than anything else. But looking at the amount of effort you put in here, it seems that you're good with tedious work anyway. It gets a little bit weird at high speed. Ah! And it doesn't do great on off camber. Ah! Around we go. Let's uh, reset. H, lots of H. Who's happy birthday? What are we talking about? Screw this controller, like, uh, sorry, this wheel double shifting. All right. Slow down. Brakes are usable. It's slower than what I feel every single time. Which is not bad. I do like the fact of making like a moderately powered supercar and not just going, every car must have a thousand horsepower or it's garbage. Yeah, please don't spam too much. I will get add on to you. I think people were maybe spamming because I wasn't responding too much. That's because I'm ah, enjoying this car. Like, it feels like a normal car. Oh, the steering is broken now. Let's bring it to a stop and repair. Okay. Which one is camera? That's camera. Let's start talking about the characteristics of this car. It feels like a road car. No ESC, but yet it doesn't oversteer. Very well done. 
See, everyone stopped spamming E now. Oh, sorry, H now. So that's good. Uh, what do we have, um... Yeah, it's not all-wheel drive, but sometimes it just feels a little all-wheel drive-esque. This is actually very good for a road car. I very much approve. Feel like 900 plus is too much horsepower for most? Yeah, 900 horsepower is too much for a normal car. For most people, that is too much power. We're only starting to get into those numbers with lots of uh, stability control things. Stop to repair, take a penalty. <laughs> Propane shipping? What? Uh, what is the power of this car? Let's have a look at the engine quickly. Yeah, go into pits and take your penalty. <laughs> Uh, what is that? I got like a thing over the power curve. UI apps talk curve 2.name? What? What is this? I've never seen this before. But yeah, that's about... <laughs> Just uh, shy of 800 kilowatts. That's 485 kilowatts, which is a lot of power for the 90s. And for nowadays, that's still a lot of power. That's 560, is it? I can't remember. 485 kilowatt to horsepower. What? Oh, that's watts? No, I want kilowatt. Give me kilowatt, please. Kilowatt to horsepower. There we go. 650 horsepower. That is a lot of horsepower to have. Nobody should ever be sneezing at that. But they've done a very good job of reining it in and making it feel civilized without having to resort to ESC and whatnot. Now, how much does this weigh? I'm going to just go out and guess that this thing probably weighs 1.7 tons. 1.45 tons. So, I mean, I wasn't far off, but I also wasn't close. Oh, yeah. Like, you know what I mean. 90 horsepower uh, daily driver gang. 150 daily driver gang, rah, yeah. Except my ute that I had, which I still have, it's just broken, is probably around 230... 240 to 250 horsepower? Straight six? Say kilowatt, not... Yeah. We were both 250 off our guess, just in the opposite direction. No, it felt really... nice. And I do appreciate this car. Because it's not a race car, we're going to give this one a full fill score. And we are going to start with styling. And I don't think this is the best looking car. I'm just going to go out there and say it. Is it ugly? No. Is it good looking? Eh, it's questionable. It is very much a supercar and it has the proportions of a supercar. A lot of people are going to like it as is. I feel that if they had to launch this in the 90s, it would be a lot more appreciated. I'm going to give it a 6. It's on the good side of bad. Like, it's not bad. It's just kind of like a little bit better than mediocre. It's not mid. 12 horsepower gang? What, like a lawnmower? Uh, focus on handling, not horsepower. I mean, 500 horsepower is not like 1,500 horsepower, but if the car handles good, you're okay. Yeah. I feel for a supercar, 650 is like your top end sort of uh, limit of supercar before you get into hypercar, really. Uh, there are exceptions to that, like the Bugattis. They're not really hy They kind of are hypercars, 
but only because they do one thing, and that's mostly top speed, but they're still luxurious, which I feel puts them into supercar still, or a super tourist sort of thing. Um, yeah, acceleration. Feels pretty good. We'll give that like a 7. Handling, and give it about a 7. Fun factor. It is quite drifty, but still quite controllable, so we'll give that an 8. Cool factor. It's a V12, so that's quite cool. But it's also like an understated supercar, which never feels special. So we're not going to give it a great cool factor. We'll give it like a 6. Anybody that knows it is going to be like, wow, that's a really good car. But a lot of people are not going to be so cool. It's also quite wallowy. That's going to make it like a bit of a laughing stock in most parts of the world, except America. Let's actually go to this thing. Look at that lunge. That is the sort of lunge you'd expect on something like a um, Bentley sort of like sporty. Uh, sorry, uh, not sporty car. Like a, a luxury car. That's the one. 202 horsepower is 150 kilowatts. Well, 189 or something like that kilowatts then is what I have. Range Rover drives, but supercharges. Range Rover drivers put supercharges on their cars. If you say so, there, there should be. Sorry, lots of burping here. Uh, information of the car I added in the info. I did notice that. Let's go to that. I'm very burpy right now. What is happening? Mid-sized car, performance class 9. I doubt that. No. Value 450,000. Sounds about right. Uh, brand, body style, coupe. Oh, I, I suppose it is coupe. Source mod, 1,400 kilos. is about right. A year is out by about 20 years. This feels like 80s to 90s sort of thing. Maybe like later parts of the 80s to earlier parts of the 90s maybe. But not that. Give it a yellow color maybe. That looks a little bit cooler. I will be honest, I like that a little bit more. Better have a brown steering wheel from the beginning then. Did that make it functional, dude? Did what make what functional? What are you talking about? The steering wheel? The steering wheel's not moving. That sort of lunge can make you lose your lunch? <laughs> a little bit. Uh, what other information we got here? We've got performance. 500 newton meters. That is out... Wait, hold on. 386 kilowatts. Did I... I read it wrong. I added an extra. I think I got, I got Newton meters confused. My bad. That's 300 something kilowatts, was it? I'm an idiot. 386 kilowatt. Uh, yeah. Um, three. Okay, 500 horsepower. That feels like an actually a reasonable number. The 650 I was saying is like the top end. This feels like a very reasonable sort of number. I do very much approve of that. Well done. Wait, hold on. I forgot to get rid of those apps that I just haphazardly placed around. Uh, moving on to the next part of the score is... Trackability. It feels way too wallowy. But I think we can leave it as is. So we'll go like a 5 on that. No. You know what? 7. It is better than like a normal car. Cars HP is in the name. Oh, okay. If I remember, three months ago, I made an automation car. It was amazing. It was not terrible. It was too fast. That can happen. You going now? Okay, see you later, Adrian. Also, if I haven't said it yet, hello, Adrian. Welcome to the stream. I don't believe I've ever seen you around here before, but thank you for being here, and goodbye. <laughs> You're going to buy a drink? Alright. Uh, features. Supercar. 
high cost. Probably not going to have things like radar guided cruise control, but it's going to have other things. It looks fairly decent in here. Not being a full-on supercar, being a little bit luxurious. Um, maybe give it a 7. It's going to have a lot of things, but not everything. Uh, comfort. It's fairly wallowy, so it's going to be okay. It's not going to be like uh, the Lexus sort of wallowy. Seats look a little too thin, though, to be luxury. And it is not the quietest, but it is not loud. So we'll give it a, like a, a pass on that. But those seats are way too uncomfortable. And really low. When you're younger, it's fine to get in and out of cars. But like, say you're young and you've been in an accident or something and you've hurt yourself. And you have to get out of that car. It's going to be less comfortable. So like you injured yourself at a sporting event. Trying to get in and out of that is going to be a lot worse. Imagine that every time if you're in the age bracket of somebody to be able to afford this car, which is somebody over their 50s. Uh, quality. Probably handmade, right? Do we have a country? Looks to be Italian. Uh, so for Italian, it's going to have like nice feel to it, but it's going to be garbage and it's going to start breaking fairly quickly. We'll give that, like, a five. So, like, they counteract each other. Probably are going to have to go back for repairs, and they're going to be phenomenally expensive, but a lot of that will add to ongoing costs. Practicality. It's a two-seater, and it's also very long. So parking is not very good, and you can't really fit many people in here. Do we have a luggage compartment? I suppose you could fit a luggage compartment back there. Um... Two. It's got two seats, that's at least what it's got. Oh, Javier is going as well? Oh, wait, no, yeah, no, that's to get the drink, yeah. Oh, see you later, Firebird. You're not leaving? I don't know, they said you're leaving, so goodbye, Firebird. <laughs> I'm gonna watch as much as I can before dinner. No, he was saying bye to you? What? It says Italy in the information? Oh, I must have missed that. Okay, then. A value. What is the value of this car, do you reckon? It's very expensive. You're getting a fairly decent car. But a lot of people would want a lot more from their car. Say, like, Porsches. A lot cheaper. And uh, arguably as fast as Ferraris sometimes. Depending how you're gauging faster. Because there's lots of different ways you can calculate faster. Uh, let's go like a 6 on that. Why did pressing 6 not do anything? Weird. Ongoing costs. I'm going to give that a 0. JB Editing. I don't believe there was any. Would I buy it? Yeah, but it'd never be in my price range, so that'll be a no. The je ne sais quoi. I feel that most of the stuff here is represented, but I'm going to give it a little bit extra, because there is actually a little bit of uh, interesting work you've done with a good engine. And realism and commonality. You've got the year wrong. Your air in to air out ratio was wrong. Uh, if you don't know what I mean by that, that's something I have talked about a bunch of different times. You notice how you've got a lot of air coming in here? That air has nowhere to vent. Except, not even at the rear, that's carbon fiber. There's only a little bit of ventilation here. So there's a little bit there. That you don't want to be running air all the way down your car. That's just taking up space that could be used for other things. There's a little bit of an air curtain here. Just a smidge. Yeah, you, you've not um, put that into perspective. So that means that the air would go underneath. Which means that this thing would create a lot of lift at high speed. Which would hurt your handling. As an Australian, do you see huge spiders a lot? And if you do, how do you deal with it? Okay, so, yes, I do see spiders, uh, large spiders, quite often. Usually during summer, and what I do is you get into this sort of pose, and then you go, Aah! Basically is how you deal with it. How you going, Pippa? Did I scare you? I'm sorry, Pippa. Those are fake vents. <laughs> I mean, you could say that, but then you're probably going to have an overheating engine. I don't think the year is wrong, I think it's meant to be retro. A little bit maybe. Uh, 
Anyway, suspense, a little bit. Uh, realism and commonality. I feel that, like, I know what you're talking about. There's a Ferrari that kind of looks a little bit like modern retro. Let's have a quick look at that. I can't remember what to do with it. Was it the P90? No, that's not right. A little bit. SF90? Uh, I said front engine, and it comes up with mid engine. Thanks, uh, Google. This one is that what I'm thinking of? Yeah. So that's a really shit picture. Um, and that one's also really shit. What's happening? Am I being trolled? Is Google trolling me? Here we go. Yeah, you're right, it has bad air management as well. Oh, but you also see that the grill is actually not very big at all. It's uh, very blocked off. Hmm. A lot of this is also going to an air curtain. What does the rear look like? Hmm. What is this? The Roma. The Ferrari Roma. better image. So we've got only a little bit of front grille area. A lot of it's probably coming out around the windowsill to be honest. Some of it might be taken all the way. That's looking to be all blocked off. But you could tell that this is a modern car because it's got like a lot of unique modern chic lines is probably the way I'd describe it as. And like the weird shitty headlights that a lot of modern cars have. This looks nothing like that. Gorgeous car, the Roma? Sure, okay. I'd say that the only thing that looks like a Roma here is a little bit the, um, the hood is smidge and the headlights ever so slightly. A hood on the bonnet would also help. So I suppose you could say that a lot of the air is maybe coming out here. But it feels like you've got a lot more air in than the others. Oh, you're right. That is actually fake vent. It is actually blocked up. My bad. Okay. So what you're dealing with then is an overheating engine, which is an entirely different thing. That comes out of uh, other scores. Air intake behind the front wheels. There's only a little bit of an air intake here and a little bit of an air intake here. We're not talking, though, about uh, air intake for the engine. We're talking about keeping it cool. And a lot of these sorts of vehicles need more than just radiators. They also need uh, oil coolers for also the transmission. Especially if this thing is a DCT, it's probably going to want that. The Retro Countach? Nah, nothing like it whatsoever. Very extremely different. They look nothing alike. Nee, 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 can touch this. What? Don't know what you're trying to say. Anyway, uh, let's continue on. Realism and commonality. Feels quite realistic. The design doesn't feel quite right because it's out of time. Also a little bit weird. We're gonna give that like a seven. I feel it could have been a better realistic score. And oh, that unfortunately hasn't come out with a great result. And I think it's mostly you're hurting in the daily categories, but it's a supercar. So you've kind of brought it in for this. It's done fairly well on these scores. I think if it had a look like a spectacular car that would have made kids go, wow, you probably would have gotten a better score. I've seen my fair share of supercars catching on fire whilst revving the engine in place. Uh, a lot of times that has to do with fuel related issues, like leaks. Looks like an EB110 but flattened. You sir are high on something and you should stop doing drugs. Alright, next car is 
the Borrego Spitfire GT2. Do we want this to be on this track? I feel like this one wants to go to Spa. There we go, Spa Franken Chops. How would you rate Australian cuisine? 1 to 10. Australian cuisine is actually quite good because we've got a lot of influences from the best European places and we've really kept a close eye on it. There is a few places where we suck in uh, certain cases. A lot of the time, Asian food a lot of the time sucks here. You have to find a good place. Now, recently in Adelaide, we found a really good place. Uh, we've been there a few times and loved it every single time. They do really, really good ramen. If anybody is ever coming to South Australia, let me just show you this place. I fucking love this place. Uh, let's move this off screen, just in case it shows my location. Okay. What is this song? Uh, yeah. This place, right here. Ryumon Ramen Izakaya. Oh, really good ramen. For Australian uh, palates, that is. I don't know, Japanese might make it better, but here in Australia, that's pretty darn good. All right, we're done with all these scores. Let's go bring out the next race car. Or the next car, which is a race car. This one is loud. And that's why I usually have it about 50, because most cars are usually quite quiet. Is traditional Aboriginal cuisine common there? No, it is very rare. And yes, it does vary. Hugely. It's also... I wouldn't really call it cuisine. I'd call it like a culture of food. And the culture being like... Uh, because they didn't care for... Um, like built up civilization. So they never really did a lot of super interesting things. Or really... Bothered with that. There was interesting foods. There was damper. Uh, but a lot of other foods were mostly situational. They didn't try to experiment like the French did. We have a lot of Italian influence here in Australia, uh, which is why things like Starbucks have never got on, because we kept our um, coffee influence from Italy. Uh, and why a lot of fast food places from America don't catch on here is because we have a very good, like, food everywhere else. To us, a lot of the fast food, you can immediately just go, this is garbage. Which is why McDonald's is starting to really struggle. Because a lot of the times they just used to rely on their laurels of being very popular. A lot of people are now moving over to Hungry Jack's. Carl's Jr. has come into South Australia and it is quite suffering. What I hear from everybody is, is the burgers are just not good. It doesn't taste very nice. Their fries are fine. But everything else is not good. So everyone's just going back to Hungry Jack's. It is the best option. And reading up about the... What are warring peoples lately? Lots of different... Lots... If you've seen an Aboriginal map of Australia... Don't tell me you're looking up one race of Aboriginals, or one group of Aboriginals. And this also constantly always changed as well, by the way. Because, like, lots of things was all, were always happening. So you can't really... Yeah. There's just too many. What's Hungry Jacks? It's kind of like Burger King, except better than Burger King. Same company, but they do a better job here in Australia. Because they have to, otherwise they would fail. Fast food for Burger King and McDonald's makes me sick after eating. 
Yeah, it doesn't do a very good job on us. You can only read about one at a time, though. Yeah. That's a lot of territories? Yes, it was. What did you think about the new Scintilla Cat in BMG Drive? Scintilla Cat? I don't know what that means. Alright, let's try this car out. They have not put a racing cam in here. Is it a manual? Go back to the first. That is a manual. Okay. I wish they had to put a racing uh, camera position seat in. I stuffed up the line. That's because I was moving my mouse at the last second. It's a little bit wallowy side to side. I know it is an older car, but even then, that would probably make it a lot more solid than this. Is this a six-speed? It is a six-speed. Probably doesn't need to be. A little bit of heel and toe action there. Got the heel and toe better that time. I'm not brain fighting so much. Oh! oh stop that up. Oh, wrong gear. And that put me offline. God, I love Spar. Spar is such a tricky beast to tame. Poo on here. Yeah, I did do okay on Poo on, I suppose. Yeah, I feel this could have gotten away with just a five speed. Maybe you needed to keep it in power band, maybe? I'm not sure. What engine did this have again? I've forgotten. Oh, ah, I stuffed that up horribly. No! Uh, which one do I want to press? This button? Yes, I do. Okay. I want to try that again. I should be able to get this corner really good with this car. This feels actually really good for a race car. Like, is it perfect? No. Is it pretty darn good? Yes. Ah! It just feels really nice to drive. That was the wrong button. God damn it. Driving with a manual in a car this powerful and this fast doesn't feel right. I stuffed it up again. Maybe a little bit more front traction would help. Because it does feel a little bit understeering. But it also feels very controllable, which is pleasant. I should be able to take that at full speed. I'm gonna try that again. Here we go, here we go, here we go. It turned! Nah! I had to lift so much. Uh. Alright, let's see how this thing does at um, Long Chemin. Alright, and... <laughs> nope! I'm already understeering. I didn't even make it to Blanc Chemin. What was that? You know what, actually, we're gonna go in. We're gonna give some camber to the front and just a little bit of toe out a little offset you know actually about that maybe uh, uh, brake power I think we're good there alright let's try that out Feeling a little bit sharper, but still understeery. Having to lift a lot. Ugh, a lot, a lot. 
Damn it. It just needs more arrow on the front. This thing is holing. It shouldn't be understeering here. Nah, way too much understeer at high speed. Okay. Yeah. I think I figured it out. This thing handles really well at decent speeds. Once you start getting into higher speeds though, this thing... Where's my handbrake? There's my handbrake. Unfortunately, does not have enough front grip. So either less rear downforce, but ideally more front downforce. The neighbor is too nice. What are we talking about? I am home now. Hi. This appears to be spa. Yes, it is. I don't know what you mean about that neighbor is too nice. What is the coolest exotic car you have been in? Been in? Would have been the Aston Martin when I was a child, but I don't remember exactly what Aston Martin it was. Uh, as of recently? Like in living memory? Not really anything. Volvo S80 T6? Like the first one? <coughs> Um, the Jaguar XJS, the, the V12 front engine car, that's the XJS, right? That's about it. There's not a lot of cool cars here, to be honest. Look, ATS, the information, the Ferrari is gone, what? Apart from my anti's Rolls Royce? What? Anyway. Uh, control E. Somebody said, look at the details on it. Looks fairly standard to me. Um, we're going to start scoring this thing now. Styling, it's very questionable, which makes it feel very realistic in this British kind of like heritage of like, not always really hitting the mark. Like, look at the XJ15 by Jaguar. That a very questionable looking car. You gotta go now, Wilson Mayhem Entertainment. Catch you later, bro. Um, Holden, you removed the N. Eh? I like how this thing looks, to be honest. I do, but it also looks questionable. I like a lot of the detail. There's a lot of cool stuff here. One thing you'll notice, though, is the front is really low, and then here it lifts up a lot higher. You're probably on a race car gonna have a very consistent flat floor. What you can do if you really want to, is get a the 3D placed box, um, which is one of the fixtures, it's just a square, cube, sorry. Put that down to the bottom, make it full, and then make sure that all your side skirts and everything touch it. You may have to add 3D added parts on the skirts, maybe to make that go down. The rear end, maybe not so much. Maybe extend out the rear end a little bit more on a race car. But yeah, not too bad. Usually on rear ends of race cars, they extend a little bit more, so you can have the aerodynamics further out. I wanted to hear my neighbor's Ferrari drive out of the driveway, so I asked you to turn it down a smidge when I could have done the stream, but meh, now the car drove away. Oh, okay. I skipped your question? You'll have to re-ask it then. If it's questionable, it's perfectly British. I agree. Um, the back end, also, once again, very questionable, and I feel very British. And I like the fact that it feels period correct if this is like early 90s. Press the wrong button. Uh, 1995. That actually feels pretty accurate. It does feel very 1995-esque, with like, uh, these vents down here as opposed to actually being like proper ventilation for a race car. This feels like... A GT1 homologation car, to be honest, and I love it. I've always wanted a Holden Ute SSV for the Australians uh, keeping me away from their modern El Camino. Anyway, what do you think about Holden Ute? I think the Holden Ute looks cool. I think they come with a good V8. V6, I do not approve of at all in any sort of way. Um, but... Ford Australia, which is just as Australian as Holden, uh, because Holden is not Australian. Holden started off as a saddle maker, then got bought by GM, basically. Um, and Ford is smarter, ran a better business. 
Uh, and they've hung around, but not making Australian cars anymore. The Ford Utes are not only a better vehicle, but also a better Ute because the rear tray can come off and you can put on an aluminium tray. I've always wanted on. A... Ah, okay. That that was your question. The neighbor have a Ferrari 305 GTO. It's so cool. It's my favorite Ferrari. Oh, okay. I'm not a fan of the 305, to be honest. There's something I don't like about this guy. Yeah, something about it just it just looks off in every single way. I think I've just figured out what it is. The front comes out really far, but the windshield is also really far forwards, which just looks disproportionate. It feels as if, like, the windshield should be further back and the front should be, like, maybe... Maybe just a little bit further back. Um, and then we've got the last category, which is, like, because it's a race car, we're just going with driving feel. It's good at low and mid speed, but when you start getting faster, your lack of front error is really, really showing. And this car is just creating way too much lift on the front or maybe too much uh, downforce on the rear. Let's have a look at the... Your rear wing also comes out too far to be in most race categories and is ever so slightly too high maybe? I, that's a bit hard to tell. But it does come out rearward too far. Slightly, but it does. Um, I think, yeah. So your front end becomes really light and it just understeers at high speed. It hauls. It feels really good. I think if you had a, had a good front end on this and you had have done some J-beam editing like to put the camera in the cockpit would have been really great. As it stands, 7 out of 10. Uh, there's so much to like here. And I like the fact that it does look a little bit off. I think that just adds to its character, and I love that. That itself has given it like at least an, uh, half an extra point that it would have gotten probably over just looking a little bit better. I just like the character. Hey, Flamesy, how's it going? Welcome to another channel member. You've got a hole in your right wing. in your right wing? What? The commander has been knocked out. Load Apache. What are you talking about? I get it. You love Poland. Great. Um, yeah. 7 out of 10. Simplified score because it's a race car. I like it. Could have been better. The back windshield reminds me of a Corvette. Yeah, a little bit. From the side, it actually does look a little bit more TVR-esque. But you know what? This here is actually reminding me a lot of that... Grand Theft Auto car. Welcome, Amy Mass. How's it going? Thank you, Ed, for pointing that out. I missed that. Also, Phil, you should try War Thunder. I have tried War Thunder. I did pretty well, I think. I did alright. It's just, I got to a level where, like, it takes a really long time to get to the next guns, and everyone shits on you for picking uh, tanks that you like over tanks that are the best. I just want to play tanks that I like. And everyone's just playing the meta, which is really freaking boring. I think they should limit tanks that actually existed less, so then people can't just pick them all the time. Because then everyone will just go out in the German tanks. And that would be it. Which is so boring. War Thunder live streams with the steering wheel? I think not! <laughs> uh, Rapid GT. I think you're right. That might be it. I was about to look it up. No. No. Um, oops, no, check you are. Um, this car, Ocelot. Now, the reason why I'm saying that is kind of the shape a little bit but also like these big triple vents on the side. If I could get a better picture of it, that would be great. A little bit hard to see, but you see the big triple vent, big triple vent, 
That's what it's reminding me of it a little bit. Cross with a little bit of Celine, maybe. And also the fact that the front stoops down a lot and the windshield comes quite forwards. This stoops down more, but yeah, you get the idea. F620, that's the name that I know it by. Noble M12? Yeah, a little bit. I see that on the front. But the Ocelot M12 looks different because it's like not front engine. Maserati GT and Jaguar XK. It does look a little bit Jaguar-esque, as I said at the beginning. Not really an Aston Martin body. I don't... Maybe. I don't know. What do I think of the first-gen Corvette? I like it. Maybe like an old Aston Martin? Yeah. Anyway, that's this car. Let's move on to the next one. This is the... Oh, this is the Wildcat. So you said, don't just take this one to a circuit track, you said. You know what? I want to... Anyway. Uh, Thunderdome. It's been a while since I've used this map, by the way. I should get around to fixing it, but I tried to learn how to fix it. I've gotten better, so I might be able to fix it now, but it's still really hard to make tracks. Oh, these sorts of tracks, that is. Ah. The GTA Astons, yeah. Hey, look at that! And... It is hard to see, but the uh, rev limiter down here on the hood is actually working. Long gear shifts. I feel the first gear was maybe a little too short. This feels like how you should enjoy an American car. Slowly loading blender? Yeah. I'll read what you've written in a bit. This feels nice. Going wide. Nope, we brought it back. Okay. Ford and GTA 5 is vapid, if you say so. I don't know Ford America enough to be able to comment on that. So we'll just defer to your better judgment, apparently. How many gears does this have? This should only have four. Yes, good. It is only a four speed. I'm happy. All right, let's take this to a different place. Uh, what do we want to take this to? You said city, right? And the only real city, I believe, is West Coast. So let's take it there. Let's go to Chinatown. Uh, working on mirrors something you got a mod in, or does putting a chrome material on it do it on its own? No, you have to make it work on your own. Working wing mirrors? Nice. Okay. I didn't notice that on this car. So, what you have to do is go into Blender, apply the material, and then fix the UV unwrap. That's all you really need to do. Then save it, export it, make sure you've got like the right name, all that sort of stuff. I've got a lot of other things talking about how to do exporting from Blender properly back into BMNG. Uh, check out my video on the complexities of making an F1 car. A lot of that's still very relevant. I want to make an old muscle car, but don't really like the bodies that are available. Really? They're best at muscle cars. Try a police chase? Maybe. I love the design of this car, I just want to go over that again. I feel though that... Maybe that should have been like a little bit wider. I suppose it's alright. There is a lot here to like. 
All right, let's go in. Try this out. Big burn air. And it feels nice and cruisy, sort of like revving. Like the five and a half K red line, pretty good. You know what? I'm gonna hook up my handbrake for this. Wherever my handbrake cable is. It's right here somewhere. I have to just find it. Where the hell? Ah, okay. It's gonna now unravel it because I've not used this handbrake really since I got it. Because it was a good idea, but I just didn't need it. Uh, which one don't we need? Which one is which? Hopefully we don't need that one. And plug that in. Okay. Still have that. It's not working. Great. Alright, doesn't look like my uh, handbrake is working. Hold on. Pedals and axes, that's what it was. I thought it was pedal pressure for a second. No, nope, it's not working. Wait, hold on, maybe I have to wind it. No, oh, my voice is going. Controls. Uh hand. Brake. Vehicle. Parking brake. Now, nah. uh, parking brake temporary? No, nah. not working. That's disappointing. Why isn't it working? It's plugged in. Oh well. Bell bottoms some music a little bit. Does feel a little bit funky. Try resetting the car. I doubt that's going to do it. Yep, no. Nah. All right, that's fine. Oh, it didn't recognize I was in clutch in. goes around a little too easily. <laughs> a lot of power. I also feel this is on radials. Hopefully this is like a late 60s, at least, car. Damn it. Damn it. Curb rashing all my tires and wheels. Whoa. It's a little bit hard to control the drift. It's on cro no it's on crosswise? It is? Wow, okay. It goes around like a smidgen too easily. Smidgen more understeer would be great. Oh my god, and then it doesn't want to turn sometimes. And then, yeah, alright. I feel that first gear should be ever so slightly longer. Oh, go! Eh. 
top-notch work as usual. It's not the easiest to control, I'm gonna be honest. I feel that this thing would be easier to control with a controller. Yeah, this is definitely a controller vehicle. You're almost getting the hang of it? Oh, come on. This is not easy to drive. Oh my god. Sometimes it just doesn't want to turn. Oh my god. Uh, is there a steering wheel angle multiplier in tuning, or do I have to change that in settings? Brake power. Maximum steering angle, ride height offset. No. Let's go... A little bit of... Oh, we can't go toe in, can we? Let's go some positive camber on the front. Maybe that'll help us. Oh, you know what? We've got uh, tire pressures. <laughs> Alright, yeah. Let's go into tire pressures. Uh, tuning. Decrease the rear tire pressure a bit. There we go. Damn it. What I want is something between like first and second gear. Then around we go. Damn, that's fun. And without a handbrake, it's making it a little bit harder to drive, to be honest. Ah! That was it. A Mustang lol? How dare you. I feel this is very much a controller vehicle. Is that the button? Yeah, that's the button. Damn it. Just keep breaking tires on these, like, super brutal curves. Oh, come on. Damn it. This is fun. But also, probably not the most enthralling thing to watch, because I'm just sitting here quietly. Damn it! You know what? I can also change the gearing ratios from here. Alright, I think we've had enough. Uh, you can go into the tunnel rear quick. A tunnel real quick. You mean for audio purposes or something like that? I suppose we can go do that. Uh, where is a tunnel? There's one around here, right? Yes. What, do you want me to turn headlights on? Go for the lights. Oh! The lights aren't glaring me in the eyes and blinding me. Okay. What you should have asked then is to turn it to night time. That's impressive. Yeah, usually lights suck from automation. Oh, this thing understeers at high speed. Use a bad right. Well, 
I think we got some steering damage, actually. Nope. I tried to pressure lock. Didn't do it right. Alright. Yeah. Cool car. Let's start giving it its fill score. First, we should probably reset it. And starting with styling, we're going to give this one like a 9 out of 10. It's pretty darn good. We'll give it a little bit extra in, um... You know what, actually? Give it an 8 out of 10. And we'll give it more in the, uh... Je ne sais quoi factor. Um... 8. Acceleration. 6. It's not really putting its power down gracefully. Also, the gear ratios are all over the place. All illuminated in the dash. I thought I noticed that. It was a little bit hard to tell, though. And the number plates are light up, too. Oh, nice. Really? Hey, they do light up. Bit hard to tell there, because it's, like, backwards. But I believe you. Handling. We've got, like, a 7 on that one. Fun factor. Actually, you know what? 6 on that one. 7 on that one. Cool factor. 10 on that one. Trackability is probably like a six. It's probably not going to be the fastest car, but you're probably going to have an okay time. Just be wary of your brakes. A track day, not a track monster. Oh, is somebody leaving? Or is it just you? Not a thing. All right, see you later. Not a thing. Gear ratios is on par with muscle cars at the time. Really? Three or four? What? Anyway, features. It's an old muscle car. It's not going to have much. It's got electric windows. And a fan and a radio. So, two? You know what I... Well, we'll give it a three. It's at least... Okay. Comfort. What do we got? We got plush seats, no headrests. Seats are a bit high. Uh... It was not too loud. Back seat's gonna be fairly cramped. And the suspension... You know what, let's drive it from outside for a bit. Very stiff, but not the stiffest. Hold on, handbrake. Uh, comfort. We'll give it like a six. It's getting there, but not great. Quality. It's American, so it's going to last for the engine at least. Interior is probably not going to be the greatest, all that sort of stuff. Uh, so we'll give it like a six. It's good. Practicality, only a four seat, but really only a two and a bit seats in the back. Uh, not the biggest boot, but also not tiny. It's bigger. And parking is going to be a little bit boatish. So we're going to go like a four on that one. Value. These will be extremely expensive, but will not go down in price. These are the sorts of cars that really hold their value. Unless there's like a massive economic crash. Which focuses a whole lot on supercars. Uh, sorry, on the high-end expensive cars. We'll give that like a 7. It'll be pretty good. Ongoing costs. We'll give that, sorry, like a 3. Repairs will be good, but it'll be heavy on fuel. J-Beam editing. Gauges. Steering wheel. Lights are an improvement. It's not the most advanced, but we'll give it like a five, I reckon. Eh, that should be fine. Can't stop looking at that color. The detail is 10 out of 10, if you say so. So I went to do some things anyway. What did I miss? Okay. You should try Cracks Drifting Racing online and do Time Attack. I have no idea what it is that you're talking about. And can jump it down the roads in the city without braking and without braking. Oh, the both types of braking. Nice. Wouldn't be popular in a fuel crisis? I agree. Would I buy it? I would love to, but it'd be out of my price range. Uh, the je ne sais quoi factor. Gonna give that like... A 10. Realism and commonality. 10. 102. That is a mighty score for something which, like, did so bad in daily. That is a phenomenally high score. But 
It just feels really on point. Oh, you know what? Actually, no. The suspension is a little too stiff. We'll go a 9 on that one. 101. But, uh, yeah, like, leaf springs, drums on the rear, very understated... Hey, the little camera. Uh, very understated brakes, uh, double wishbone, very normal for that sort of time period. Yeah. I just... Really good. 20 plus liters per 100? Yeah, sounds about right. Fill your mists, shifter, and pedals. Oh, did it re Hold on, I forgot that. You've done it wrong. What you've got here is a sequential shifter, not a manual shifter. Uh, but I will bump that up by one because that's not something I've done a tutorial on. We'll go a six on that, though you have done the shifter wrong. Shifter is simplified? Yeah. So 102. Really good work. The only way you know how? Yeah, I don't know. Does it do it in... I remember there being something about, like, uh, even Beam and G cars didn't know how to do... I think it was shifters. Let's quickly try something. Manual spawn you. Yeah. It doesn't do it. So let's um, spawn a different car. See if it's in all of them. Manual. That wasn't the right button to press, but anyway. Yeah. No, no control there. What else we got? Do they have a car that they love? I don't think they do. What about one of their newest cars? Does this come in a manual at all? No. What about anything else? They did the bolide last. That comes in a manual. Yeah. It is possible to do this, but the amount of extra work involved in it would be absolutely mind-bogglingly numbing. Um... I looked into it, and I'm pretty sure I could figure it out. I'm pretty sure I have figured it out. But I haven't tested it, and I don't want to, because it seems like it would just be a real pain in the dick. So, let's go remove others. Next car is whatever the hell this thing is. The Baja Injection? I'm assuming that's meant to be. But yeah, 102, that is one of the highest scores of all time. Uh, let's have a look for this car first before we try it out. Here we go. 1.8 turbo injection. Use aware Vixen. You're here in the chat, or at least were. I don't know if you're still here. Uh, I can't. You can't do lure coding? I don't think I needed lure coding. I'm not sure. Uh, interesting numbers we got here. Cheap. Small front it was a small front engine sports car. pre dinner Honda being uh, facelift and uh, facelift was already visible. So, uh, white body very event, futuristic looking concept inspired by the production model of screen. Like, oh, yeah, for good. B. But 1985 came and went. Missed the deadlines in 1986 was a no. Oh my god. What year is this? Okay. Late 80s. Uh, little TLDR. It looks like it's meant to be an off-road car, maybe Group B-esque. So let's first take it to here, then we'll take it to, like, the really Baja sort of off-road area. That's the wrong button to press, that was the right one. Do we have a cockpit camera? No, we don't. That is one of the simplest J-Beam edits to do. Is the steering wheel centered? Let's reset that. Gotta go now, have fun. Okay, see you later, yeah, yeah. I'll check out why the engine is not showing up again and make it available for download. Eh, sure. 
I am torturing a Hirachi Sunburst. What about you? I'm torturing a viewer supplied car. Uh, I feel that this thing should be all wheel drive. Ah! It handles like garbage. If it is all wheel drive. No, it's not all wheel drive. So I just gotta drive it better. I'm guessing that this is not actually meant for off road. Hold on, what tires does it have? Oh my god, there's so much stuff in the way. All terrain, so it is meant to be probably for a little bit of off roading. Fuck! That engine is too tall and too heavy for a car this short of a wheelbase. Nah, this is garbage. Let's try it on normal bitchmen then. I believe this is supposed to be a groupy thing, but I may be misremembering. Done about 40 laps with it on stream? 40 laps uh, with this car? Okay. 40 laps of what? I like how it's like really underpowered as well. Oh my god. Your wheelbase is way too short for this to be a road car with such a heavy rear end. Ah! All the laps of... Crandon? I don't know what Crandon is. <laughs> Let's try this on a little bit more reasonable surfaces. Also for the 80s to have this much PSI, that's excessive. A little bit unrealistic. Yeah. But I suppose this would have been a bubble car, they could have tried interesting things. It was meant to be Japanese, I'm assuming. Hmm. I'm having to go so easily on the throttle because the wheelbase is just too short. Drifting that entire way! That's one way to go down the core story, a little bit, yeah. They said meant for Mexican market? Oh, okay, weird. Damn it! I'm having to heal and tow the hell out of this thing. Because it's so unstable. Oh my god. Now, you could drive this thing fast, but not as fast as what you could with a car that had a longer wheelbase. It'd be slower in a straight line, but all your cornering would be so much faster. The only other thing that you could really do with this is maybe make it into a um, Jim Carner sort of car. You're also, your RPM is maybe like 10 to 20... Oh, sorry, um... 1 to 2,000 RPM too high. So it is only 5 speed, okay. Yeah, I'm having to like really ease it there because it was like just teetering to go into oversteer. And once this thing goes into oversteer, you are in dangerous territory of snap oversteer. And I'm having to, like, not trail brake because it wants to go around. And your suspension feels a little too side-to-side -side wobbly. I suppose it is an 80s car. 
but I feel there's this proportion of more side to side wobble than what there is like a uh, longitudinal wobble. Yeah, longitudinal feels very stiff. Side to side feels unreasonably softer, which is inverse of usually what you have. I don't know. It's been a while since I've driven an 80s car. All right. What Ekai would tell me now? Softer rear suspension, harder front. Yeah, that would that would uh, work. Um. Yeah, interesting car. It's a Japanese-inspired, like the little Fiera. Sure, okay. But they all use four cylinders, I believe. The wheel and control tunes can overlap. What? Yeah, tunes for wheels control the keyboards are usually different. Yeah. But I did say that this week was going to be from a wheel. The sweet spot is 6500 RPM, yeah? Yeah, you probably shouldn't have given the extra RPM then. It just feels weird. I suppose for a race car you might do that. But this isn't a race car, right? This is a road car. As it's got a winch on the front for some reason. Rear suspension is at one. I don't know what that means. Phil Man is making noises again. Yeah, a little bit. You spot a stream? Welcome, Cascade Freak, to the stream. Stream scoring, because this is looking to be a road car. Styling, three. Acceleration, four. Handling, five. Fun factor, seven. Cool factor, three. Trackability, two. Features. It's a 1980s car, it's probably not going to be too great, and it's also, like, very cheap. The fact that it has a radio is surprising. Uh, like a cassette series, I mean. Um, two. Comfort. The seats looked okay. It's probably really cheap in there, so it's not going to be the most comfortable. The road noise would probably actually be really loud in this car. Especially with that, like, rear area. It's going to create a lot of road noise. Uh... Four, I suppose. Probably also a little bit cramped. Yeah, you can't like really stretch out like you can in really big cars. Quality. Uh, what do you say? Mexican market? <laughs> Country of origin. Mexico. So, in... Third world countries... Uh, are they third world? I'm not sure. Lesser developed countries in the 80s. Quality is not their strong suit. It's mostly about making it cheap and pumping it out. So I'm guessing that this is not going to be the greatest car. But costing $21,500 from a country that is not very rich at the time. Probably actually going to be a decent enough car. Wait, was the soundtrack currently playing a remix or an automation soundtrack? No, I've just got um YouTube... Uh, audio library playing. Yes, the brand is Mexican, the engine is Japanese. Okay, Mexican is a developed nation, so first world in modern nomenclature? Really? If you say so. Um, lesser rich countries, then, is probably a way of saying it. I don't want to disparage the Mexicans, but uh, they're not an economic superpower of any sort, like Japan which makes phenomenal cars, or South Korea, which is pretty high up, but makes pretty decent cars, like almost as good as Japan. Uh, but they're also not like, like Germany, which is like gone over the top, where it's gone trash again, where like their build quality is only good to the feel for a little bit, and then starts to break down really quickly. Uh, but I'm not going to say that this is going to be the most reliable sort of vehicle, but it does have a Japanese engine, which is a very reliable one. So I'll go, like, five. Because it's also probably built with really cheap materials, being a very budget sort of orientated car. Practicality. Hmm. When should add to practicality? Sure. Two. You know what? No, it's got two seats. Three. It'll be easier to park as well. 
Uh, but it's not good off-road. It's actually quite bad off-road. Value. Well, resale's probably not going to be great on these because people are probably going to know these as death traps because a lot of people probably would have died in these. Uh, also, being like not a leading world country, safety wouldn't have been uh, the forefront of people's minds, especially if you're trying to make a Group B car. Group Bs are not safe cars. So, if you're thinking, oh yeah, Group B, great. Yeah, you're probably not thinking safety. Uh, it's got like a three on that one. Ongoing costs? Probably actually really good. Except for that V6. Like, the V6 is probably not a reliable engine, but probably not too bad. Mexican people work very hard? Yeah, sure. That's not what I'm getting at. What I'm getting at is, like, uh, in the 80s, when companies were really starting to like push the boundaries of what customers would accept was starting to really come into a thing because stock markets were reaching a new high and a lot of like good on the surface sort of things were happening but rubbish underneath and I'm guessing that along with just like the world culture probably wasn't going to be one of the greatest sort of vehicles so back in that sort of time plastics really became a big thing and making those plastics really cheap also becoming a really big thing so just like the interior would degrade the exterior wouldn't be great either after a while paints weren't great in that time period either clear coats are notoriously bad from that era Oh, that dude Darren, you're off? Okay, see ya, that dude Darren. Oh no, that's Iron 3 Firebird. Okay, catch you later with Iron 3 Firebird. You're hungry? Yeah, I'm a little bit hungry myself. Uh, JBM Editing, I don't believe there was any. Would I buy it? Yes, even if it was a death trap. Je ne sais quoi. I feel that most things are represented here. We'll give it like a little bit, because it is fun. But I don't like the engine. The engine is completely unrealistic to put in such a short wheelbase mid-engine car. And the fact that it's also longitudinal as opposed to transversely mounted. Wait, is that a rear engine? No, you moved it into place. So the realism on that one is like one. It's got an engine. And it's a mechanical injection, which is not very cheap to make. There's a reason why they moved away from it. Not because it wasn't like very super efficient, but because, yeah, like, um, not, yeah. There's a lot of plastics here. It's maybe not easy to notice, but the bumper is plastic and a different material from the body. Oh, really? Oh, you're right, it is. You know what? You, you too, and the je ne sais quoi. Oof, your worst uh, score so far? Oh, that's unfortunate. Uh, Off-road cars next time. You know what? I'm going to do a steering wheel one next time as well. I'm going to do it from my race rig again. This seems to be quite popular. If you want to submit an off-road car, that's fine. Just make it clear that it's meant to be off off-road in the description. So then I know to take it off-road. Maybe put it in the name of some sort. Uh, have you played Gran Turismo? It's a Of course I have! What? Have I played Gran Turismo? Come on! So, I didn't have a PlayStation 1, but my cousin had one, and they had uh, Gran Turismo 1. I loved that game! I didn't get a Gran Turismo of my own, uh, I played a little bit of two at another person's place as well. Uh, that was part of a group thing. Uh, I was just over at this person's place. I don't know who they were, but we were just there for some reason. And we got to play Gran Turismo 2. And I still loved it. I didn't know better at the time that Gran Turismo 2 was not very good. Until recently I played it again and I was like, yeah, no, this game is trash compared to number one. Um, I got a PlayStation 2 used well after it was new because I didn't have a lot of money at the time uh, and it was basically just a collection of two dollars here and there from like chores I would do around the house uh, and I couldn't afford Gran Turismo 3 at the time so I 
bought along with this used ga console a used game, which was Gran Turismo 2. And it's com backwards compatible, yes, but no save game. So the thing which I liked most, which was the safe game in that, like uh, the campaign, like uh, build up your supplies, I left that console running for days, even weeks I think sometimes. That was so much fun, I loved that so much. Then PC gaming, uh, gaming came back in, I got play, uh, um, Gran Turismo 3, I think I had a PlayStation 3 and I got a uh, PlayStation, oh sorry, I got a uh, Gran Turismo 4, uh, and maybe 5, I think I got 5? Miss six. No, I don't think I had five. No, I didn't have five. I had four prologue and four. Then I had Gran Turismo uh, Sport with the PlayStation 4. Eh, I outgrew it. Uh, Gran Turismo Sport was a good idea. Great multiplayer culture, which I think was the best in anything. But it just felt a bit shit when I'd be driving a near stock Audi TT and completely blitzing a Bugatti Veyron down uh, the street at Monza. What? Like, what is this garbage? And I haven't got Gran Turismo 7. One, because, you know, no, I'm just never gonna get Gran Turismo 7. They are trying too hard to money grub and I cannot condone their actions. What they're doing is pushing the envelope too far and what people accept. And then what they do is don't take it back to where it is acceptable, which is way beyond where they started. They'll actually take it back halfway and say, oh, look, we fixed it. So then people are like, oh, okay, you fixed it. Oh, uh, yeah. And people are just way too blind to realize that they're still getting fucked over by what is now one of the shittest companies in the gaming industry. Boycott Gran Turismo 7. Fuck them. My favorite Gran Turismo, Gran Turismo 4 and 5, it just plays better on a PC with emulation. Oh, really? Nice. Blasphemy, blasphemy, I say, how dare you speak such words of the biggest PS1 masterpiece? Gran Turismo 2? Look it up, bro. Gran Turismo 2 is very much disliked because the physics are just completely off. Like, they made Gran Turismo 1 against basically uh, what everyone in the company thought that would do well in the game. And it did phenomenally. So what do they do? They made it like every other shitty sort of arcade game. And really, really tanked it. That's why number three didn't uh, take off quite so well. Uh, I think that was also a launch title for PlayStation 3. Which was also itself a bit of a bomb. Which is unfortunate. But yeah. Gran Turismo 2 had lots of cars in the used market. Which I loved. Everything else about it, like the physics and the feel, was just not good. What about Gran Turismo 7? Is perfect. Great setup. Did Gran Turismo 7 have pay to win BS? Yeah, very much. Like, not exactly pay to win, but like, pay super excessive amounts to keep playing on a game that is the most expensive standard game that has ever come out. I don't know about anywhere else, but like normal games that are AAA titles will cost between 60 and like $80, maybe $90 sometimes. Gran Turismo 7 cost $117. Now, if you wanted to play what that game was really good for, which is multiplayer, that's a subscription fee. You want to buy any cars that uh, are like limited to you, you have to uh, pay money basically to be able to get them because they come in shots of short notice. Did you, the wallet was limited. So, if uh, cars came out rapidly that you really wanted to buy on, like, the limited release schedule sort of thing, you would have to uh, buy the first car, then realize that you're fucked because you couldn't afford the second one because your wallet wasn't big enough to buy it in time. Really dodgy stuff. Your only option really was to buy more things. Welcome Gage Dykstra back to the stream. But yeah, uh, yeah, they still do a lot of dodgy things. I think they are probably not worse to their company and employees like EA, but in terms of money grubbing, they are worse than EA at the moment. And for that reason, I boycott Gran Turismo 7. And Grindfield's worse than any other than one in War Thunder? Sure. I was looking at FIFA 23 and this is pushing $90 on PlayStation Country. Uh, currently. Yeah. They are worse than EA then? Yeah. They're, 
They do a lot of really dodgy shit. Hey, Pippa. Getting comfy? Hmm, hopefully you're comfortable. All right. Uh, next car is... Ah! I feel McLaren... Oh, sorry. McLaren 780S GT3. Do we take this to Monza or... Circuit de la Sarthe? Which is Le Mans. Hmm. You know what? Let's first take it to Dunsfold. Even though I've done fold like this version, not really the greatest map in the world. Doggy? Friend? I miss having a dog? Yeah, I miss having a dog too. I'm so happy I got her. She's a little bit windy though sometimes. Spa? Maybe not. No! Really? They didn't do an interior camera? Uh, nothing's animated on the inside anyway. So we'll just go to like hood cam. Soft, definitely soft. All right, we'll try this one first. Oh, okay. Two pedal setup, no clutch. Ah! Oh my god! What is up with? Oh my god! Brakes are good. What is? Oh my god! Why is it so twitchy? Oh my god! I'm trying so hard to keep this back end in check. You know what? I think I have to leave ESC on. This thing has snap oversteer. Look at this. Like, minimal steering input is sending this thing all over the place. Not looking forward to the day my dog goes. She's 12, yeah. I was devastated when uh, Pugsley passed a couple of years ago. I was so devastated by that. So I understand. My god, what is wrong with this car? No! Oh! It's aero. Your aero is just wrong. That is so disappointing. Because this one looked to be promising. Yeah, no, unfortunately they're using advanced aero stuff. You've stuffed it. It looks great. You didn't... Like, moving the camera into place is probably, like, the second easiest mod to do. The easiest being, like, the supercharger and the electric car ones, where you just drop it in and that's it. This one, all you have to do is play with a little bit with the, like, no placement for the camera and keep refreshing, going back and forth, getting into place. But this... No... Race car should be nimble, but not that nimble. You gotta go see you next time. Okay, see you later. Fugog. Bad name. Uh, that's why I'm saying focus on handling or else goes wrong, don't focus on horsepower. Yeah. This thing could have been good. Maybe also got a, like, automated manual? I, I can't actually tell where this racetrack is. <laughs> Alright, let's uh, try an actual different map. Uh, I saw more people saying Spa, I think. So let's try Spa, and we can stay on Spa anyway. The current real life is track fo focused, if you say so. So this is your car? Is it? Was making an interior for a Group C race car, and I wasn't using references, and I looked at an image. But this is... But this on is not? What? But I wanted to slip on a banana peel. I don't know what you mean. Alright. Now, 
want to give a score based on how disappointed I am that this car doesn't handle as good as I thought it would. So, like, I'm so disappointed, I want to give it a 2 out of 10. Because it handles immediately bad. Immediately. Even with ESC on, it is horrible. But honestly, you've done a good job of making it look decent. It's not the best looking car, but it is pretty good looking. There is a lot to like here. So I'm not going to give you like a really low score. Your looks and realism on looks is pretty good. I'm going to give you like a... um. high score for that but it's driving feels absolutely atrocious from the very beginning with it's like lack of grip all the way to the top also do you have like yeah I think your rear tires might be a little beyond regulation also the realism on like your wing placement also wrong as we talked about earlier six looks really good really disappointed interior looks like a model piece of plastic you don't actually, um, also welcome Big Walter 32. You don't have to do a really big interior for me. It will help you score a little bit, but I get the interiors are not everyone's piece of cake. No, what's the word? Not everyone's thing. Anyway, uh, death trap memento. Yeah. Handles like a muscle car. No, worse than a muscle car. This is much worse. He did a good job of tr of not flying into the fence there, Phil. Yeah, I thought I did pretty well. What's wrong with the wing? Um, generally, GT3 uh, actually specifically has rules on this. Uh, the car has to stay within a certain silhouette, uh, of which this wing would not be within the silhouette. Uh, two, this back end would not be within the silhouette. But the wing specifically, the big problem is is the wing cannot be outside of the normal bounds of the car. So, like, right... You know what, actually, let's um take this to a flat bit of ground. Uh, where's flat? There's not actually a lot of flat on this map, I'm going to be honest. Uh, here's fairly flat. Let's go here. Um... It cannot overhang any, like, bodywork part that's normally on the car. Not what's added onto the car, but what's in the normal silhouette of the car. So it goes way too far back, and it's also way too high. Well, not way too high. It's a bit too high. Uh, it's also way too far back. For GT3 regulations, that is. Uh, the rest of it's okay. The problem with interiors is that they take too long and isn't easy to make them look right. Uh, either the seats look wonky or the dash gaps or other stuff. It takes effort and learning. Also, welcome Game Boy Tarossia back to the stream. I forgot to say that. My bad. So it handles like my uncle's old car with a broken... Yeah, it feels like it's got broken suspension if you didn't know that it was an aero problem. Now he scrapped it and got a new one. Looks like an old silhouette race cars. I don't know about old, but yeah. Um, flawed car, unfortunately, just not there. Handling, if I was basing it on handling alone, it would get a 0 out of 10. Uh, let's move on. Hey, you know what? Miller CT Supertrack. Let's see. What does it say about this car? In here somewhere. Here we go. 1995. I'm not going to find any exact specs and rules, blah, blah, blah. I'm assuming it's meant for NASCAR circuits. So let's take it to my track, even though my track is not great. But it is the scale. And has the right banking amount, even if the entry and exits are wonky. I'm just looking at Continental GT3, wing is sticking outside rear bumper and it's pretty tall. Really?
No, that's within limitations. Can we get a good side? So, a little bit may have, um, like, the, uh, housing of it may have overstick, but it is within very close. Yeah, as you can see, that these overhang just a little bit more than the wing itself. But yeah, you're right, that is over a little bit. They may have some sort of, like, special dispensation. So, here's also another thing. Because cars are so varyingly different, and some are just going to be better than others, they do sometimes give special dispensation on uh, these sorts of things. They probably got a special allowance to have the rear wing a little bit further back, because this car was probably not as good as other cars. And as you can see, if you were watching the 24-hour uh, races that have been happening at Spa recently, that um, uh, there were no Bentleys in the top area, it was just... Mercedes, BMWs, and Audis, basically. Some Porsches, some Ferraris, but yeah, BMWs, Audis, and uh, uh, yeah. Car is very aerodynamic, but it slips and slides. This one, if you say so. But uh, this would definitely be under the roof line. Even here, I can tell that that would definitely... So you got to know that the um, cards on the side... I can't remember what the side plates, end plates? Here, here, you can see it a little bit easier. It goes much higher. Those end plates do create drag by creating vortices and all that sort of stuff. But what it's actually doing is preventing air from uh, the top being sucked to the underside of the wing, which would make it considerably less efficient. So these end plates have to go much higher and much lower than the wing. So uh, it does cover it up a little bit. It's a little bit hard to tell. You'd have to get a picture of it without the end plates to actually fully know. BOP is about ballast and tires. There's more to it than that. There is no specific rule that I have been able to find so far in GT3 on how much downforce cars are allowed to make. There is, however, regulations that states specifically that every car must be submitted for aero testing to make sure that it's within, uh, like, a competitive range. I can't remember exactly what the wording is, but that is uh, the sort of wording that they use to say that basically you submit the car and they say how much downforce you can create based on uh, many aspects of your car. Don't worry, the British are good at bending the rules. Sure. Other countries do it a little bit better sometimes. Welcome, Mr. Frogo, to the stream. Bentleys dominate Bathurst? If you say so. I haven't watched Bathurst in a long time. You're getting tired? Alright, see you later, Ed. Thank you for coming around, at least. It is 1 to 3 a.m. currently. Also, Swan Neck works as Drake's creating corridor increasing pressure? What? I've never heard of Swan Neck before. Do you mean decreasing pressure? I'm confused as to what you're trying to say. Anyway. That doesn't look like a normal car. That's probably just a concept. Probably. That doesn't look right. Yeah. Um, let's bring out this racing truck and see how much fun we have. I do like the fact that this thing has a uh, spoiler at the back. That's pretty cool. I like that. It's like those 24 hours let mans race. Audi, BMW, Lambo, Ferrari, Pagani, etc. I don't know if Pagani has been in GT3 in a very long time. Uh, Lambo doesn't often do well. Damn it, once again, no inside shot. Doesn't look like the steering wheel is animated anyway, so we're not missing out on much. Let's give it a try. Lots of wheel spin. Okay, it wants to stay in first. Uh, sometimes... These uh, NASCAR-esque sort of vehicles will have... 
an 8k red line limit. Uh, that's something you could have looked into. Sing Swan next overhead wing swats. You mean gooseneck? Where the interior was totally skipped in the review part too. What, the last car? Oh, that's because I was done with that car. It was really disappointing, basically. I also realized that sometimes I'm looking at the wrong camera. That's for an eye tracker. Uh, no, not an eye tracker. Track IR, sorry. And that's going to be coming in for, like, um, some future things like you're a truck simulator or America truck simulator sorry instead of VR having to lift a little bit okay fair I suppose I don't know Pagani never ran in GT3 yeah I didn't think so oh sorry I was also thinking that Maserati Maserati hasn't run in anything like that in a long time either I think the last time Maserati tried to run something is when they used that Ferrari F60 body or whatever it was. The Ferrari Enza body. That one. Mm. Maybe a little too much rear arrow. Uh, automation cars naturally floppy compared to vanilla. Yes, if you use suspension presets. If you just spend some time learning how to do it, they can be actually quite solid and rigid cars. Uh, the sports preset and automation in BMNG is very soft. Just keep that in mind. Uh, I would say it's kind of like a Volvo sports car. Or a... um. An early Bentley sports car. Still quite soft. A little bit sporty. Yeah. The Gani race car is real. It's just a, a GT1. Oh, okay then. Damn rear error. I tried to turn it up because I thought it oversteered too much. Ah. Maybe you were thinking of, um... Uh playing with a wheel? Sorry, with a keyboard? Maybe also you didn't think about circuit racing? Yeah, I'm understeering here. So much understeer. And then it all oh, oh, stop oversteers! Yeah, alright. Let's take this to a track that I might do better at. And I'm thinking like a road circuit. I could take it back to West Coast. Where else is there a road circuit? Oh, not a road circuit, but like um, a short track sort of thing. I think I'll just take it to the racetrack. And we'll just try a few combinations of that. Do you like Ronnie Peterson? I know the name. I'm drawing a blank on who he is, though. I don't think I've ever really cared too much about him, though. I can confirm, I'm assuming that's meant to be Pagani, did indeed run a GT1 car using the Pagani Zonda GR. Okay, cool. Let's try this truck again. Presets suck and they always go almost the same setup regardless of vehicle characteristics. I don't know about that. Dampeners are too soft, springs are too hard. Camber is off, rear sway bars are too stiff. I suppose I've never really like categorized it, but I've just like tuned it back and forth between the two games. Or just set it to a race preset, to be honest. Clutch damage? I use the clutch. Now I know what you mean by oversteery. We'll try to work that out. Welcome, Ruben, back to the stream. Ah! If anybody doesn't know, Ruben is another YouTuber in the automation BMG space. 
But if you're gonna choose to watch them or me, you gotta watch me. I am the better YouTuber. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, race presets always use same camber, which is awful for... It can be, yeah. Welcome back, cool boss. Did you go somewhere? Sorry. I, I saw you here earlier. I know I did. I myself am doing a live stream later today. It'll be a little bit more special than usual also doing a PC build. Oh, interesting. Okay. Can you make stiff cars like the Scintilla GT3 with automation right? That car feels great. The Scintilla is a garbage car. Welcome Midget Man to the stream. How's it going, bro? Um, but yeah, you can make really rigid cars if you want. Ah! God damn it. This car is very wayward. I think your problem you've got here is it has too much... Like, sorry. It has too much front mechanical grip and not enough aero front grip. So reduce front... You know what, actually, I can change it myself right here. I don't have aero control, unfortunately. But I do have at least tire pressure. So let's decrease rear tire pressure. Can't change anything on the rear suspension because it's a solid axle. Uh, I think actually we'll be fine as it is. I wish I could go a little bit of toe in on the rear, but it is a solid axle. That actually had a hell of a lot more traction already. Our oh, racing truck is a brutal beast. No! It is feeling a little bit better. Maybe I will change the front a little bit. Oh, but now we're actually understeering. This is just tricky to control. I'm guessing this is also running, like, spec tires. Yeah, see, now we need front arrow to compensate. Or maybe just less rear arrow. <laughs> Alright, keep missing that one. Because we're going over a rise in a car which is meant to be, like, very mechanical based. Okay. Ah! This thing is a hoot, but I think it's very much a one note sort of vehicle. So we're done. There we go. There's handbrake. I like this car a lot. There is a lot to like here, but it is a race car, so we're not going to give it a full fill score. Its realism feels fairly high. I can't really uh, poo poo it too much on anything, really. It's got very uh, narrow tires, like you would expect on a. Um, uh, NASCAR-like sort of vehicle. Um, I feel the suspension should also, on a race car, be a little bit stiffer, maybe? Am I wrong in that regard? It feels nice, but it also feels as if it should be stiffer. Could be wrong, though. How much does it weigh? It weighs over 1,300 kilos, which is, like, uh, just shy of 3,000, or maybe just a little over 3,000, I'm not sure, pounds? Somewhere around there. To be honest, for a solid rear axle, it is common practice to run them without rear sway bar for more traction and compliance, if you say so. Welcome, Block 62. The course feels normal to me, like the AC Ferraris, maybe. The default race version is a death trap. What? I'm confused as to what it is you're trying to say. Wait, what have we got here by Javier? This until it was a huge disappointment when I tried it. How can you make an all-wheel drive car so oversteering? Yeah, it just feels like... I don't think the BMNG devs know how to make real cars. You know what, actually? I don't think I've actually driven the Scintilla with a steering wheel. Let's give the Scintilla a very quick little drive around. Uh, let's go with... A lot of people say that this one is 
the best of the scintillas. Let's give it a quick try. Also means ECT, so we use it. Oh, okay, it's controlling the gearbox itself. Nah! Okay, I went around. Let's refresh. Mm, understeer and oversteer. And then I did break at the wrong time. That was my bad. But you would hope that a car wouldn't do that. That's meant to be for, like, road use. What? You know what? Let's go for a road car. This is just a garbage vehicle. Uh, spider. You know what? I feel like driving the spider version. Everything is back? Okay. Oh, I'm not a big fan of ESC. Also, I don't have, like, uh, steering assist on as well, by the way. Oh, it feels mushy. And understeery. Now, I know that I'm probably not driving it right because it's mid-engine and it requires a different sort of driving. Oh my god. You know what? Okay, let's turn ESC to something else. Active? Inactive? And let's send that to Corsa. Hopefully that's right. Oh my god, this thing feels like it wants to kill me. And then it understeers like crazy, what the hell? What is this weird balance? Oh my god. I braked it a reasonable amount of time. That's right, I remember now. The brakes on this thing suck. The, the brakes were like a notoriously like bad thing that I immediately went, why are the brakes not functional? Anyway, that's this car. Scintilla is probably the worst car they've released so far. Like it's less dangerous than the old um, Civetta, but it's still a garbage car. Favorite car in the game? Out of the default stuff? I don't really have one. I don't really like BeamNG that much. Like, as a development team, they do a lot of questionable decisions. Maybe... Like, a Basto? Because, I will admit, they do very good muscle cars. Very good muscle cars. Everything else they do, not so great. You know what, actually? I really do like the, um, this. I like this car a lot. That's a fun little thing. But I don't know about the race version, but I just like the road version of it. I keep forgetting. The Autobello Pic Piccolino is my favorite car. This one, favorite car. Do I prefer Flappy Battle or Paddle? Uh, depends. If I'm going road stuff, uh, Shifter. If I'm going uh, track, like top end sort of race cars, Paddle. I wouldn't mind a road car with it, though. Yep, over Everest. Just wanted to try that out. I love this little car. A little bit dangerous, a little bit fun, and you have to use your skill to, like, really drive it. I'm not actually going to spend a whole lot of time driving this thing, though. That was the wrong button. All right. Control E. Remove current. Did I give this thing a fill score? I don't know. 8 out of 10. Perfect score. Yes. There's a lot for me to like about this car. It feels... Unrefined. And I don't know what sort of track, it, uh, track it's meant for. Oh god, the OG Civetta was a nightmare to drive with keyboard. Oh, with keyboard it would be a nightmare. I remember that it was hard even to go on a straight line. It can be, yes. Loop in the third? I don't know what you're talking about. Um... Yeah, 8 out of 10? It's getting there. It feels unrefined. The design is very subtle and very basic. 
but I think it fits really well for what you're doing. And that just, it makes me feel good in all the right places. It's tickling my giblets, bro. Let's go remove current and let's bring out the next car. Which is, ah, the mini laugh. You know what? Maybe this time they've told me what map they want me to take it on. Uh, where are we? Here we go. The mini laugh. It looks like they got on a Hirachi. Definitely not an MX-5 at all. Okay, fair enough. Uh, drifted on a big track of your choice like ATT or Hirachi. $30,000. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm not going to give it a fell score. I'm just going to give it a simplified score because it is not a standard car by looking at that steering angle they've got on it. Let's go Hirachi since that's where they um, got it set up. Looks like an older body Chevy Silverado. That's what I've heard. I don't know much about American vehicles, so I couldn't argue either way. Waiting for that to spawn in and take a drink. Of course, the moment I go to take a drink, it spawns in. Love it. Well, soon is back. Welcome back. They have... I know Ekai Min knows how to code things. They could have put in... A, um... A proper camera for this. Woohoo! Oh my god. That is amazing. That is amazing. There were so many times I was like, oh, that's a good drift. It's over now, though. And it just wasn't. It's hard to control. At first, maybe. <laughs> God damn it. This is hard to control. I think I've bent the suspension. And I, like a drift car, if you don't enter the corner correctly, you're just gonna understeer. What have they done to the suspension? To make it so, like, drift happy. Reverse entry, bro? Nah, alright. They've done something to this car that makes it not want to go forwards. There is something weird happening here. What have they done? Something weird is going on with this vehicle. I can't, I can't figure it out. What have they done? It's like they put force applied to the front of the vehicle. So like moves it in a way that is not normal. There's something strange happening. Now I can't remember how to drive it. Looks like a drift build. It is a drift build. But they've done something weird. Now I can't drive it. What's happened? What? Let's take it back to home. Let's do corn, uh, T1 again. See if that'll fix my brain issue. What am I doing wrong? I, like, I'm initiating on my own? Am I not meant to initiate? Am I meant to just drive normally? Maybe I'm meant to just drive normally. 
Something is weird. Oh my god, what is wrong with this car? There's something weird going on in my neighborhood. That I didn't mean to do. Didn't even try to do that. How did I do a first time round? Something is... God damn it. It's really hard to get into play. What is wrong with this car? Oh my god. No, that's not the right one. That's what I meant to do. Let's go to automation test track. I know that one a little bit better. Too much angle into the corner? It... You drive it. Maybe this isn't set up for a wheel, honestly. Do it lightly and then put it in... I don't think you guys realize that what is happening with this vehicle. You know what, I'll try to drive it normally like a normal car. I'm not trying to initiate any drifts here. Yeah, it's just, it's very wayward. And that time I didn't want to go around, okay. Damn it. Oh my god. This is tricky. Damn it, it doesn't like to Scandy flick in. Or inertia drift or like any of that sort of stuff, because it just goes too far. It just goes. Trying to initiate sucks. Done. Next car! Alright, uh, this one... You know what, actually, I feel like taking it around this place. I feel like Echo Min tunes it perfectly for himself, but has no idea how I drive cars. I'm used to driving car... Uh, drifting IRL. Good, we do have an interior. That's all working. That's all good. These aren't working. I don't think these are working either. Anyway, I just wanted to test that out. Suspension feels too soft. Little bit under wall, okay. Oh my god, the suspension is way too soft. Oh my god, the suspension is way too soft. And it's like really twitchy. And a little bit under steer at high speeds. <laughs> My god, this thing is insane. Custom sounds. Ugh. It has tinges of understeer, but I think you have to just drive it differently, maybe. Ah, understeers. It is like... Probably also the fact that I'm not used to a car going so fast, maybe? Understeers. Oh my god. What is this beast? Oh my god. Damn. Ah! Oh my god, this thing is... It's like close to being set up well. But not quite there. <laughs> you know what it is? It's the... 
soft suspension and the power problem. Of like, they've just fallen into the whole thing of like, it just needs more power, right? Also, like, it's not picking up my gear shifts, which is really annoying. Even if I'm stuffing up, I want it to still change the gear shifts I want. Brakes are good. Alright, we're gonna see if this thing can take slingshot. It's really freaking twitchy. It doesn't take that very well. Very hot top speed though. X-ray gear is probably just a cruising gear. It doesn't like Bavarian Bend. <laughs> oh my god! All my breaking points are forgot. Uh, which one do I want? That one? Yeah, that's the one I want. I'm just here. Oh dear. Let's see how it does Adam's Apex. That'll catch out any car that's not set up very well. Damn it. Even Popsicle is catching us out. Too much power. Damn it! Oh my god! All my concentration is not enough for this. You know what, actually? If I was to take that right, I think in uh, Adam's Apex would actually be showing that this car is good. Damn it! What the f Ugh. Ah. There is like some weird lifting up on the body here. Suspension needs to be better. Oh my god, turn. Don't turn that much. way too hard. Alright, let's see how Cossacks handles this car. Oh, you know what? We have a weird ESC on. Nitrous disarmed. Drive mode tamed. Off. It feels more predictable. Like it's not jerking me around uh, offline. This is something to get used to. It may not be as fast, but it feels a lot more predictable. With it off! Alright, let's see how it does around slingshot now. <laughs> oh, that's really twitchy. Oh, don't stop the car. Don't stop the car. What a garbage game this is. No, that's not right. Let's go through 
Bavarian bend again. Uh, there's a lot of clipping on the dash too. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit distracting. That's uh, to be checked, I suppose. Imagine your lawnmower sounds like that whilst you're cleaning the garden. I would hate it. I got an electric lawnmower because I hate loud lawnmowers. Does anybody know if there's like a, uh, a track record for this thing around uh, any of the racetracks? Let's see if they've written anything about it. 21.7 PSI in the turbo? That's not too bad for a modern day car. 7 liter V12, 12,000 RPM? Yeah. Uh, does not talk about lap times. I don't think. It's a lot of compression ratio. Hmm. Uh, the features are very aerodynamic, used to create massive amounts of downforce, yet sleek enough to reach limited top speed of 430 kilometers an hour. Of course, you can go higher if you've dared the uh, designed to uh, buy the newly formed division, blah, blah, blah. It sports quad type of user unleashed of another, blah, blah, blah. Tamed odometer limits it to 100 units, cost $3.6 million. Let's turn the NOS back on and see if I can control it with NOS without uh, anything on. The car wobbles way too much. And then, like, it becomes super duper fast. Maybe it doesn't have enough downforce? I'm not sure. Oh my god, it doesn't want to turn sometimes. This chassis and this suspension setup is not designed for this amount of power. That's the best I can say. Eh, my eyes. Um, a lot of fun, but not finished. In the handling department. Let's turn NOS off. Switch to just automatic. Yeah, look at that, like, lurching that's happening in the suspension. That's the sort of thing you expect out of, like, a... A Mercedes. They butchered the sound, then? What? I believe this is meant to be a V12. Or V16, maybe? I'm not sure. Uh, V12. I think you're right. It does sound a lot like a V10 more than a V12. I will agree. Kind of looks insane, though. Oh, yeah. Design is off the charts. Um... Do they want a full, full, a full fill score for this? It's not going to be very pleasant. He does state he's not the best in handling. Okay, fair enough. Uh, you know what, let's go with design. It's design... It's like... I personally think this could look a little bit better if it had like softer edges to be more realistic. But I do like a lot of it already, and getting softer edges is going to be a goddamn nightmare and probably near impossible. So we're just going to give it a 10 because they're within limitations of automation. Acceleration, even though they tried to push the limits of automation. Acceleration is going to be a 10. 
handling is going to be like a six. Fun factor is going to be like... You can't really have fun, but what you can do is kind of like what you do in a Tesla, where it's like getting pushed back into the seat. That kind of fun, and the other sort of fun is not nearly going to be as much as like a Mazda Miata, to be honest. Uh, so like, for the amount it's going to make you smile, like an eight. No, not. Nine. I can't give it a ten. It's not fun at handling. Uh, cool factor. You know, actually, do they talk about, no, they don't talk about the car here. Cool factor. I mean, it's gonna be cool. You get anybody walking past this car, immediately they're gonna be like, wow! Uh, even children will be like, wow! Um, so I've covered what children sound like and what grandparents sound like. Everybody else is also gonna sound like, wow! When they look at this thing. But it does look like a V10? No, it's a V12. Uh, it ain't that hard to realize you should increase spring stiffness. Don't know. Yeah, but that'll change handling characteristics which you can't be certain of better being better or worse. That's a lot of tuning to deal with. Actually, you know what? I wonder what the collision mesh looks like. I pressed the wrong button. Oh no, it's refreshing. Oh, this car. Okay. Yeah, collision mesh is okay. Alright, fair enough. Um... Okay, this is modern. This is very recent. I thought this was an older car. My bad. Trackability. Car 4. This... It's gonna just be nothing more than a hassle to have on any sort of racetrack. Without NOS, actually, it's a little bit better, which is why I didn't give it a zero. Even still, it's quite tricky. You know what, actually? Without NOS, it's actually a decent enough car. Uh, so there are many advantages for handling more than horsepower. Many advantages for handling more than horsepower. Yeah, in my opinion, if all you're doing is driving in a straight line for acceleration, get a Tesla. You don't have to, like, deafen yourself like an Ascari. Uh, and you can also drive it daily. Like, the fastest cars in the world are a luxury sedan. Like, come on. This does it with a lot more pomp and circumstance, but has all of the advantages of being really shit for daily driving, going over curbs. Oh, sorry, speed humps. Going over curbs. You, you wouldn't... I'm pretty sure that is lower than what would be legally re uh, allowed as well for, like, uh, many regions, being 10 centimeters uh, clearance. Features. Super expensive. Are the features like headphones so then you can hear the person in the passenger seat? I'm assuming he's not going to have things like radar guided cruise control, so it'll be fairly high, but not super high. We've got like a 7 on that one, maybe an 8. Oop, not 80. Oh. Lag, weird. Comfort. Way too loud. Uh, and also like really wallowy and not great. Quality. I mean, it's a supercar, so they're not going to last very long. Feels probably good quality material, so we'll just go a six on that one. Practicality, a one. Like, you have two seats, sure, but it's like really. This is a big car. With massive overhangs. Parking, all that sort of stuff is gonna be a nightmare. And being around older people or driving around in your neighborhood, people are gonna hate you. You are going to get pulled over by the cops so much, your practicality starts going down drastically. Uh, value. It's probably only going to drop a little bit, but then immediately go back up in price. If not, just go up in price the moment you buy it. So I can't really hurt it there. It's going to have a 10 on value. Ongoing cost is going to be zero. J-Beam editing. I think they've changed wheels and stuff. They've got a custom sound. They've not bought... Uh, Watch the sound like a lot of other people do. Uh, steering wheel, gauges, all that sort of stuff. Fairly good, but they don't have like full digital gauges like you see on some other people's mods and stuff like that, like um, uh, Groundhog and whatnot. Who made the car? Some person called Tr Trajano. Trajano. 
I don't believe they've ever talked in chat before. Interior to make you feel good when you inevitably crash and die. Tesla was ruining the car community way too early. We want to hear the roars of petrol engines, not tiny whine of a motor. I think they both have their place. If I had a choice between this and a Tesla, I don't like Tesla as a company. Tesla as a company are horrible. Uh, especially Elon Musk. He's got so many like simps that are duped by just how cool he was when he originally started to do things. Though, secretly, he already wasn't cool and was already being a shit person. Um, this looks fantastic. I will give it to them. This is fantastic. And it's always going to be a talking piece. A Tesla will be a talking piece for a couple of weeks, maybe a month, with your friends and whatnot. Not to everybody walking by. Some people walking by will be like, oh yeah, I like Tesla too, all that sort of stuff. Um, but honestly, a Tesla would be so much nicer in many ways. An acceleration is going to be very similar. I don't know if this one is realistic on the accel acceleration. Uh, Tesla ruined the percentage of electric cars. A perception of a... Yeah, ruined the perception of electric cars, but there's zero things wrong with electric vehicles. Yeah, I agree. That's not the main problem. They lie about mileage. That doesn't matter. The whole range anxiety thing is something that goes away very quickly. Do you know how much range you would normally need for a car? Like, 100 miles at most if you live really far away from your work. Uh, anything beyond that? Uh, you save so much on running costs, and except maybe Tesla's a bit shit as a company, so that's not entirely accurate. But uh, if you needed to go long distance, fly, or um, hire a car. Hiring a car is very cheap, and you can then save all your money with your Tesla, whatever version it is that you have, even a Tesla Model 3, with like a, if you got a super short range version, and with the money you saved, rent out a Ferrari for a day. Go that like 300 mile distance you need to go. Most people are never going to use the maximum range of their vehicle, of the Teslas. So that is a dead issue on arrival, a, de a dead argument on arrival. Only a few people travel really long distances. Only they can really talk about that sort of stuff. But then, it's up to them to make the decision. There's some cars that can travel really long distances and some cars that can't travel really long distances. That is not limited to electric vehicles. I think electric cars make it better because there are many pollutions of gases cars and electric cars make it silent morph. The thought that cars are adding to global warming is misleading at best. Uh, yeah, sure, they add a little bit to global warming. Not really nearly as much as power generation. And Teslas add a lot to that. If you're not running solar, you're probably not really going to be helping the environment that much. Especially with all of the downsides of lithium mining and how unscrupulous companies are. And Tesla doesn't care. Because there hasn't been enough talk about it yet. Uh, just think the Tesla Roadster, so much BS about it. Oh yeah, also the lies about like a 0 to 100. That was a bit unforgivable. But still, that doesn't change the fact that the car is insanely fast 0 to 100. Yeah, if you have to travel further, get a further traveling car. It's pretty simple. There are a lot of things wrong with EVs and about range anxiety. I can refuel an ice minute in two minutes and I don't have to plan a trip. Sure. Apart from like a few interstate trips, which I could have taken a plane if I wanted to, the most I travel at a time is maybe 50 kilometers at most. Do I need a 350? Do I need to plan my trips? No. Do I need any? No. I don't travel that far. I am a normal use case kind of person. Charge it overnight, I'd be done. A Tesla would be a waste on me. Uh, the way to save the car is to have much better investments in trains, trams, and buses. It'll clear up the roads. Yeah, that's also another thing. 
Having less congestion would be much better. I'd rather them focus on public transport and allow me to have fun in my car, where I'm not backed up behind somebody that's going, I'm gonna go in the overtaking lane. Oh, you know what? I don't actually feel like going faster than that person that's in the slow lane. I'm just gonna sit and co copy their speed. I feel that there should be fines for people that drive too slowly, but the fine is not a fine. Instead, what they're doing is buying... Uh, because we get, like, uh, cards via swipe, which have credit on it, you can put credit on it at any time, they should, instead of paying fines, pay into that, so then maybe one day they'll get the idea of going like, I hate paying fines, I've got so much money on this card, maybe I should use it one day. And hopefully that really slow ass person that congests the roads and annoys every fucking person else on the road will get off the driving road and take a train instead or something. Also, that extra money that people are funneling into that by driving slow and being really shit on the roads will actually go into making public infrastructure, uh, public transport infrastructure better. And it'll actually get to the point where people will actually want to use it as opposed to governments just going, oh, well, putting money into that is a big waste. Here in Australia, we are. We have a shit history with public transport. It is so disappointing. The only ones that are worse than us in public transport is America, I believe. And some third world countries that have no public transport. But yeah. Current infrastructure is not suited to EVs. It's gotten pretty good. Batteries for EVs currently suck. Uh, degradation and replacement costs are awful thing. Depends on the company. My first car was my dad's Tesla Model Y. Really? Traveled a lot of miles? Yeah. Cost of electricity is skyrocketing in South Australia. Very much so. Still, phenomenally cheaper than petrol. Yeah. Anyway. That's, that's my rant on it. Most arguments against EVs are misguided. EVs have their use case. If they don't fit your use case, that's fine. Don't say that EVs are ruining anything. They're not. They're ruining the environments in certain areas. But then again, you're doing a lot worse with petrol. So the, the truth is...